What's up guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to a new series. What if I was reborn in Naruto as Nara and Uzumaki? Part 2. Like, share, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. With all that out of the way, enjoy. Collapsing to the ground, I narrowly missed a powerful blow aimed at my head and attempted to strike at the opponent's knee cup, but due to the overhead blow to the head, I had to urgently retreat and break the distance, avoiding another lunge, now aimed at the lower part of the torso. Because of the obvious difference in height and speed, I had to be especially cautious and calculate the most probable tactics that would work even with insufficient limb length. For now, only the natural flexibility of a child's skeleton, combined with the hellish training from grandpa, along with the good reflexes and endurance of an Uzumaki, saved me. But even so, my lower lip was split within minutes of starting, my left arm still felt numb from the strike to the ulnar nerve, and my legs tingled from blocking powerful blows, which would surely result in a fair amount of bruises later on. Shaking my injured arm once again to restore sensitivity faster and trying to ignore the needle seemingly digging into my flesh, I directed even more chakra to strengthen the muscles of my limbs and with one swift motion found myself next to the opponent, raining down a hail of blows. However, this turned out to be a bad decision, as I constantly ran into blocks and barely dodged counterattacks. Timing the moment, I dodged a strike aimed at my abdomen and, taking advantage of the brief pause, managed to push off the ground and deliver a knee strike to the ribs with all my strength, followed by a kick to the pelvic bone before jumping back. However, the landing was a bit unsuccessful, and for a moment I lost my balance, allowing the opponent to get within striking distance. Accepting the fist aimed at my solar plexus with crossed palms, I was pushed back and almost toppled onto my back. But I managed to dodge the overhead kick to where my stomach had been just a split second ago, although it didn't help much, due to constant intense pressure and gradually accumulating fatigue, I didn't immediately notice the side blow to the head, only managing to turn and expose my forehead instead of my temple. Oops. That was the last thought before consciousness was knocked out of me. Ryu. Ryu. Wake up. Ryu Kuen. How are you feeling? An anxious voice reached me through the fog enveloping my consciousness. Ugh. I squeezed out and opened my eyes, trying to sit up from the ground, but the sudden movement resulted in a sudden dizziness and darkening vision. Ryu Chan. In the concerned voice, I finally recognized Ma and opened my eyes again, weakly waving my hand, no longer attempting to get into a vertical position. That was quite a hit. I groaned, trying to get rid of the dark spots in my eyes. Just, a little break, until I get back in shape. Maybe I should take you to the medical neen? Saya asked, still looking worriedly at me. Nah, it'll pass on its own, I waved her off. I'll also get a little rest, since I'm already getting tired. Alright, if you say so, Nara sighed, knowing my stubbornness. But still, I think I should hold back and not fight at full strength. You just turned 5 recently, and throwing full power strikes, I could easily damage internal organs or break bones if you don't manage to dodge in time. I'm already at a level where I infuse my muscles with enough chakra so that nothing fatally dangerous happens, I shrugged, still lying down, the dizziness had passed, but it's better not to risk unnecessarily. Besides, you avoid hitting vulnerable points, like the neck or spine, so nothing a good medical neen can't fix threatens me. Oh, Ryu-chan, you're just as stubborn as my Otosin, maybe it's hereditary, Ma sighed and sat down next to me, arranging me on her lap. Not saying anything to that, I just smiled and closed my eyes, relaxing, trying not to pay attention to the dull pain of my battered body. A couple of months after I turned five, messages started coming in that Suna and IWA had shifted from border skirmishes to full-scale combat operations, and in connection with this, the Hokage declared heightened combat readiness for all active shinobi. If, more precisely, when the front lines shift to the territory of our allies, Konoha will have to intervene, and all suitable individuals in terms of health, who retired after the First World War or for some other reason, will be called back into service. This includes Nara Saya, who found herself in reserve due to her ongoing pregnancy. According to the calculations of our clan's analysts, this will be approximately in a year or two, maximum three. And it's precisely for this reason that I pleaded with mom to start practicing taijutsu with me. 
Despite my young age, I was already the same height as 7-year-old Shikaku and reached mom's mid-chest. Of course, 138 centimeters wouldn't impress anyone, but it was already possible to build muscle for striking power and to learn the katas of the academic style of taijutsu, designed exactly for such sizes and providing the necessary foundation for further improvement of students' hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. Unfortunately, in a burst of overestimating my own abilities, I insisted that mom not hold back her strikes, unlike her speed, although she didn't hit dangerous points, hitting which could kill not only a child but also an adult. So I had to lie down, wait until the regeneration of the Uzumaki Kekiai Genkai did its job, and I could resume sparring. And although in the evening, mental fatigue from the four dispersed clones that attended lectures at the hospital, mastered the science of clan-specific jutsu theory, learned other lessons, practiced a little taijutsu, and trained chakra control would be added to my beaten body, it was worth it. Experience in battles with opponents much stronger than you will prepare you well for a future shinobi career, and I learned to endure pain back when I trained with grandpa. It's precisely because the Uzumaki don't spare their children in training that the entire secret of the strength of their fighters lies. Well, and the fact that ordinary children would just break under such training. Fractured bones, torn muscles, brain concussions, displacements, and bruises of internal organs are commonplace during sparring sessions among my red-haired relatives. Thanks to the Kekiai Genkai, we are much hardier and won't die from such injuries, even a torn heart or a slashed throat won't cause immediate death for most Uzumaki, allowing them to drag their killer to the grave. Of course, I haven't seen it myself, but Grandpa told me about such cases, as well as the fact that with a good medical need nearby, there is some chance of survival even with very severe injuries, the grandfather he mentioned, who visited once, didn't even have a scar on his neck. Ordinary shinobi don't stand a chance in such situations. So I had to endure and gain invaluable experience while I had the chance. I doubt I'll be able to convince anyone else to engage in such intensive training if mom returns to missions. And many will participate in the war. I'm ready to continue, feeling better and making sure my head wasn't spinning, I got up and, after making a few warm-up movements, took up the basic stance of the academic style of taijutsu. Alright, but if you feel weakness or sudden pain just from the movements, let me know immediately, mom nodded and took the same stance, now it's your turn to attack. Nothing improves mood like a good portion of fruit ice cream. Taking one day off from exhausting training, I escaped from Nara's estate, after getting permission from mom, and went in search of the cafe that Choji praised so much, claiming he hadn't tasted a dessert better than theirs yet. Considering that it came from a member of the Akimichi clan, it was only natural that I wanted to try it too. So, what I'm saying is, have you heard about the academy? No, what do you mean? They say the Senju took over the leadership of the academy after their new head attended the latest graduation exam and was unpleasantly surprised by the low level of preparation and the weakness of the students, as well as the fact that no one teaches chakra control from the first year of study. They say the Hokage got an earful from her. Considering they educate their children within the clan, it must have been a real shock. Wow. Man, I regret being done with school already. If the Senju are taking charge of education, the quality of the graduates will definitely improve. Hearing a very interesting conversation between two chunin nearby, I set aside my spoon and directed chakra flow to my ears. I wonder who they're talking about? Sitting almost constantly at home, I don't always hear all the news and rumors. Before, at least from mom's gossip, you could hear something useful, when she used to take me for walks when I was a baby. Now it's just studying and training, training and studying. Actually, the only entertainment is shogi. Odo-san says that the decline in the level of the Shinobi Academy happened around the end of the Great War when, with the death of the second Hokage, our forces started suffering heavy losses and it was necessary to find reserves to plug the emerging holes on the front lines, though it was meat, but there was some benefit, you just didn't hear it from me, the Chunin speaking lowered his voice. I had to strain and amplify my hearing even more to make out the words, but it was worth it. They say, just as the Uchiha got themselves the village police, the Senju have now decided not to lag behind and recruit all teachers and staff from their own clan. Sarutobi-sama apparently tried to object, saying that the founding clan always fought on the front lines, bringing victory to Konoha, but the new head put him in his place, saying that they can't win alone and if such weak shinobi participate in the new war, the village will simply be crushed. And to prevent this from happening, the Senju clan will take on the task of raising worthy defenders of Konoha. So the Hokage had to back down and even increase the allocation of funds for the academy. When my Odo-san heard about this, he laughed for a long time. Why? Politics, it's a dirty business. 
As the village head, Sarutobi-sama has great power, and the clan serve as a counterbalance to him in the council, but the word of the founders carries a lot of weight and initiatives that lead to excessive strengthening of the Hokage's power and his supporters are simply rejected. With this move alone, he lost the opportunity to send the overwhelming majority of the clan to the battlefield, further reducing the number of Senju, and with their numbers, their influence. But you didn't hear it from me and it's better to keep quiet on such topics. You'll be safer. Yeah, clans are like snakes in a jar. Some are more or less normal, while others are too proud and look at ordinary shinobi like trash under their feet. And don't I know it. The Senju may have founded Kanoha, but they don't stick their noses up, and you can talk to them normally without fearing that one wrong word will get you accused of disrespecting the clan with all the consequences. It's only Tsunade who's different. Well, she's the princess of the clan, after all, so she can afford to be arrogant. And the Akimichi and Nara are normal too. I have a guy from the former in my team, just simple and without all this my clan is better than all the others nonsense. And their lunches. Yeah, I had lunch at their restaurant once. Yeah, getting back to the previous topic. The Senju with this move not only get those advantages I just described but also something very significant. What do you mean? Think, dummy. Think carefully about what else could come from this event? HM. Well, I don't know, it seems like you've already said everything. Oh, you. You need to pay more attention to what's happening around you. When you become a jonin, knowing the political situation in the village will greatly ease your life. I have you, so if I need it, I'll just ask. You dummy. The answer is obvious. The Senju get the opportunity to gain support not only from the other clans by educating their children but also from non-clan shinobi, whom they'll give decent basic training, ensuring greater survival in the field. Trust me, when you stay alive thanks to the knowledge and skills your teacher instilled in you, you'll be very grateful. Wow, clever. But you still haven't said, what's the new head of the clan's name? Toka. Just Toka Senju. She saw the times of Kanoha's founding and fought in the clan wars alongside Hashirama and Tobarama. And despite her quite advanced age, she's still one of the strongest in the village. They say even the first Hokage was afraid of her illusions. Ha, huh, well hello, consequences of my intervention. How long has it been since that memorable meeting? A little over a year. And in such a short time, the old lady managed to achieve such great results. Shaking my head in amazement, I returned to eating my partially melted ice cream. It can be said that it was a stroke of luck that just one remark at the right time could have such a significant impact on the course of local history. And I suspect that the further we go, the more the initial plot of the manga will change with the existing reality. So, in the last class, we finished the basics of providing first aid for severe injuries in field conditions, a young man in a white coat and headgear typical of Kanoha's main hospital workers paced around the small room, his hands folded behind his back, his thick, neatly trimmed beard and small glasses giving him a very colorful appearance of a lecturer, and with that, I congratulate you. Stopping in his measured stride from one wall to another, the teacher, provided by the hospital for the education of future medical workers, surveyed the class and sighed sadly. Of course, it would have been better if all the beginning students were present at this significant moment, but even 4 out of 15 is not a bad result. Smiling, he looked at me and winked. I'm especially glad that our little genius turned out to be among the four of you. Smiling contentedly, I waved in response. Finally, the year-long course for beginning medical ninjas is over. I won't say it was easy, but the basic knowledge of human anatomy, the habit of absorbing large volumes of information, enhanced memory from constant meditation, and a firm belief that all the knowledge future medics studied would be useful in the chosen profession, greatly eased my life. I also understood why even basic medicine lessons weren't taught at the Shinobi Academy, the overall amount of information would have been too great even for the Nara, so this path was either pursued after reaching the rank of Genin or just before graduation. Consequently, a 6-year-old among 10 to 12-year-old boys and girls looked quite comical, especially when there was only one head above the desk. But I didn't back down, and I can proudly say that the whole year was not spent in vain. Thank the gods for jutsu like Kage Bunshin, otherwise, in all other aspects of my training, I wouldn't have progressed an inch, despite the fact that the basic training course included quite a lot of practical and theoretical information, even more had to be studied at home as homework. So it's not surprising that out of about 15 students, only 4 remained, including me, and the remaining 3 were girls. Very diligent, smart, and persistent, but girls. Perhaps that's why Ikamaru Nara was always so pleased to see me at every one of his classes throughout the year, especially towards the end. Sensei, what will we do next? I raised my hand. 
After you receive your identification cards, with the qualification of a fifth degree medical ninja, corresponding to the rank of Genin, the teacher gleamed his glasses quite reminiscent of Kabuto, you will start practicing at the hospital, which I will oversee again. And as soon as you get the opportunity to practice on your own, it will mean that you have become a full-fledged medical ninja and will no longer need constant supervision from a more experienced colleague. But further self-improvement will be on your shoulders. And how long could this roughly take, one of the girls asked. On average, from two to three years with due diligence. I know people who only needed a year. My practice lasted about a year and a half, so it all depends on the diligence and effort you put into your work. Hmm, so roughly by the age of nine or even earlier, I can confidently expect to be invited to work at the hospital full time. Interesting. And what about payment during the practice? I asked again. Due to the constant shortage of qualified personnel, each of your days will be paid as a full-fledged D-rank mission, the sensei replied. Kanoha highly values the work of even interns. Could you specify the exact amount? Because as part of the team, I receive only 500 Rio for each mission of this rank for a full working day, which is clearly insufficient. I'm curious too, since I don't know the ratio of reward distribution within the team yet. If you want specific figures, it will be about one and a half to 2,000 Rio, very good money, considering the monthly sum that comes in, the sensei replied. Wow, that amount of money is enough to live on even without a stipend from the Hokage's fund, Nazuri shook her head, still finishing the penultimate course at the academy and currently living in a shelter. Exactly. Once you start working as full-fledged hospital staff, the payment will increase several times, and each of you will be provided with an apartment in one of the shinobi quarters for free, so you've chosen the right job," Ikemaru nodded. And that's it for questions for now. Quickly go and take photos, and have them here with your documents in four hours. By that time, I'll have all the paperwork sorted out, and practice will begin next week. Three days are free, enjoy the rest while you can, because there definitely won't be any later. Yes, sensei. Is it the Hokage herself? The head of Root entered the Hokage's office without knocking. What did you want to see me about? The third Hokage raised his head from the papers. Yes, come in and have a seat, Hiruzen Sarutobi said, reaching for his favorite pipe from the desk drawer and filling it with fragrant tobacco, then lighting it, a sure sign that the upcoming conversation would be important and not particularly pleasant. In a week, a new vessel for the Bijou will arrive, Hiruzen didn't beat around the bush. They finally agreed to renew the agreement. Danzo's face remained impassive, but his voice betrayed surprise. No, it's just to fulfill an even more ancient agreement between Yuzushiogakure and the Senju regarding the Kyubi, side Kamino Shinobi, but the very opportunity to start negotiations on this matter cost us tens of millions of Ryo and two dozen a rank or higher techniques, as well as a couple of favors for Mito-sama. And you agreed to it? The veteran, losing his mask of composure, sprang from his seat. We'd better have used a Nara for this purpose than pay such a high price for breaking the alliance agreement. To hell with the chance to get a full-fledged vessel. Sit down and be quiet. The Hokage raised his voice, imbuing it with a significant amount of killing intent. I'll tell you once again, we cannot use a Nara. Firstly, we don't know if he has the necessary chakra to restrain the Ninetales, and secondly, no one would give him to us. The Akamichi and Yamanaka clans would stand firmly behind a friendly clan in case of conflict, and internal discord just before the start of a war with two great villages is the last thing we need. Thirdly, I don't want rumors spreading through the village about the fact that we've changed Jinchuriki. At the moment, very few people inside Kanoha know about its existence, and let's keep it that way. If the Naras find out, so will their allies, and then the whole village. Do you understand the consequences of this event? Moreover, the Half-Blood will soon be eight years old, and by the time the sealing is done, he'll be too old to fully harness the Bijou's power without serious consequences for himself. And fourthly, to hand such a trump card over to other clans? What do you take me for? So let's not speak of this matter again. As you wish, Hokage-sama, Shimura smirked, settling back into his chair. What do you need from me? As I said, in a week, the vessel will arrive, and I want your subordinates to check the entire path that the shinobi escort from Yuzushiogakure will have to take. An ANBU team will be sent to meet them for additional security, but extra caution won't hurt, especially in such an important matter. It will be done, Hokage-sama, nodded the head of, Root. May I know the identity of the new vessel? Kushina Uzumaki, almost four years old, Sarutobi took a drag from his pipe and, releasing a puff of smoke, continued belongs to the ruling family of Yuzushiogakure, although she's a distant relative of the Yuzukage, like Mito-sama, she possesses the ability to suppress the bijou, thanks to her unique chakra. 
where will she live? Naturally, with the current Jinchuriki, we don't want Mido-sama's knowledge about controlling the Kyubi to disappear with her death, Sarutobi replied. And perhaps, in a few years, the village will have not only a new vessel but also a future seal master. Kami sees, we need it more than ever. Ryukuen. Ryukuen. I heard my mother's voice from the living room, distracting me from studying yet another medical treatise, hospital practice was progressing successfully, but it required a lot of self-study, as we weren't taught how to treat many diseases in the basic course. I'm here, I yelled in response. I heard the sound of quiet steps, and my mom appeared in the doorway of my room. Judging by her extremely serious expression, she had some news, unpleasant news. What happened? Within the next three months, Kanahagakure no Sato will begin military actions against Iwagakure no Sato and Sunagakure no Sato under the Treaty of Defense with Allied Countries. Damn. I cursed. Here we go. Watch your language, Ryu. Mom gave me a symbolic slap on the back of my head. Embarrassed, I scratched the spot where she hit me and set aside the book. And what now? I'm returning to active duty, Sayaka replied seriously. What? No. I forbid you. I jumped to my feet, staring indignantly at my mom. Ryukuen, war is starting, and Konoha will need every extra shinobi and kunoichi to defend our home, mom sadly smiled. And to protect our home, I have to return to active duty. I don't care. Konoha will survive without another token jonin. I threatened. Ryu, it's my duty, especially since Shinisu will be on the front lines with Setsura, and he's the head of our clan, Sayaka sighed. Moreover, I don't want to stay home while Nisan is out fighting. But Aji-san won't be fighting on the front lines, he'll be in the command center developing offensive plans, as he is the village's chief strategist in times of war. But you'll be leading no more than three chunin under your command, I gritted through my teeth, glaring threateningly, or as threateningly as a child could, at the slumped Sayaka. And the possibility of your death in this case is very high. Ryu. No, Ryu. What, now I have to worry about becoming an orphan because you felt like fighting. You have a perfectly valid reason not to return to service, me. And also the lack of practice for over eight years. Ryu-chan. Don't, Ryu-chan, me. We have enough money with what they pay me at the hospital to not deprive ourselves of anything. I stormed back and forth between the walls, glaring menacingly at Sayaka, or as menacingly as a child could. Konoha will find someone else to take risks, and the help of another incomplete jonin won't tip the balance. Especially considering that your specialization is mainly support, it will be very difficult for you to fight against Iwa's contact ninjas. So you will not go. Stopping and clenching my fists until they hurt, I stared with the heaviest gaze I could muster, which made Sayaka slump even more. After a few minutes, not waiting for a response to my tirade, I took a deep breath, trying to calm down, and sat down next to her, hugging her and resting my head against her side. You won't change your mind, will you? I murmured quietly, involuntarily sniffling. Mom didn't say anything, only pulled me closer and hugged me tightly, burying her face in my hair, which now cascaded down my back. And who's the most stubborn one here? I snorted. It runs in the family, Sayaka chuckled softly in response, and after a brief silence, whispered softly, I'm sorry, Ryu. Just don't you dare die. I declared sternly. I'll find you and bring you back. You know me. Heh. Of course, I know my little stubborn dragon, Sayaka affectionately patted my head. And don't you dare be a hero and cover someone's retreat if you have to retreat yourself. And who's the adult here? Sayaka asked rhetorically. The answer is obvious, I have more brains and behave much more responsibly than some. I declared pompously. Of course, even for myself, it sounded idiotic, but what wouldn't I do to lift the spirits of the most beloved and closest person? And judging by the laughter that followed, I succeeded. How much time is left? I asked, returning to the serious conversation. About four to five months before I leave Kanoha, mom replied. Four to five months, in principle, there was enough time, especially if I used the help of clones. Jumping off her knees, I grabbed Sayaka's hand and pulled her along. Ryu? I'll show you something useful, I grumbled, not turning back. Leaving the house, I headed to the training ground set up behind the house, surrounded by dense shrubbery and ordinary trees. Stopping near the training dummies, I turned around and sized them up. This, I said, pointing at the wooden dummy, is Shinobi Iwagakure, who possesses the ability to strengthen his body using earth release techniques. Moreover, he's faster, stronger, and has enough chakra reserves to withstand our jutsu, so fighting him will require taijutsu. What are your actions? I'll use katan or raitan techniques before he gets to me, Seo replied, shrugging incredulously. Hmm, so she has fire and lightning in her arsenal. 
I wonder what I have. He won't give you time to use ninjutsu, as IWA likes to set traps and attack from underground. Your actions? I'll try to close the distance, and if that fails, I'll attempt to defend myself with weapons. Considering his superiority in strength and body resilience, that would almost guarantee defeat, I shook my head. For the remaining months, you'll train to increase your speed. Why? Seo asked, utterly perplexed. I'll show you why. Confiscating a kunai, I slashed at the dummy, leaving a long scratch on the tree. That's a kunai strike. Returning the weapon, I struck again, this time with my fist, leaving a substantial dent from the knuckles in the wood. That's a chakra-enhanced strike. Raising my palm as if holding a ball, I focused, and in an instant, a glowing orb of spinning chakra formed in my hand. Without hesitation, I struck the dummy, shattering it to pieces. And that's a Raisingan strike. The profound astonishment that left Seo speechless was the best reward for me. Seven months well spent. It was precisely to replicate this jutsu that I assigned another clone beyond the three already in daily use. After all, with the upcoming war and knowing my mother's stubbornness, it could be assumed she'd return to service despite any persuasions. So, it's better to give her a small advantage at close range, considering that the Naras traditionally aren't particularly strong in close combat. That's right, forget Minato, this is the real Raisingan. If I'm not mistaken, it'll be another 10 or 15 years before he creates this technique, if not more, so whoever gets there first wins. And I don't care if it's plagiarism, if I knew how to use Hiroshin, I'd have invented that too. W what was that, Ryukuen? Seo recovered from shock after a couple of minutes. That was a Raisingan, a close combat technique capable of pulverizing not only wood but also practically any strength of stone in an instant. I created it myself. I grinned, yeah, created. And now you'll learn to use it. Since this jutsu can only be used up close, you'll need considerable speed to prevent the enemy from dodging. Also, the creation time should be no more than one second, ideally even less. I didn't get to finish because I was suddenly being embraced, squeezed, and kissed in the most banal way possible. My little genius. Just think, my son, at not even eight years old, created such a powerful technique. Ha, huh, who would have thought my mom could still squeal happily like a girl, I definitely wouldn't have believed it. I wonder, is creating a technique really such a big deal? Although, if Kakashi was considered a genius just for creating Raikiri and Chidori, then maybe it is a significant achievement. Ha, huh, I could even stir up some trouble with them since the one-eyed Cyclops and Duckbutt, who are responsible for creating and further developing these lightning release techniques, haven't even appeared yet. By the way, it's purely chakra manipulation, so the Uchihas won't be able to steal Raisingan, I informed, escaping from the overly excited embrace of Seo. And I'm not a genius, I'm just smart. Ryu, I haven't heard of any shinobi who created techniques at such a young age, mom said seriously. And just that alone will elevate our clan in the eyes of all other shinobi. Well, and if she calls me a genius, the Hokage herself might suddenly decide that I should enter the academy, and with my abilities, I'll finish it in a couple of years and smoothly go to war at 11-12 years old to prove my genius, I grimaced. And don't you want to enter the academy? Seo was surprised. Just turning 8 would be a good time, especially considering that the Senju are now seriously taking up training. No, thanks, I plan to train in the clan until I'm 11, and then enroll in the final year to meet other clan kids besides ours, Akimichi, and Yamanaka, I shook my head. Considering my internship at the hospital and other training, I simply won't have time for the academy. Besides, it's only the heirs who need to establish strong connections among other clans, and I don't really need that. Our allies are enough. By the way, if anyone reading the manga expected that Kanoha receives three groups of genin per year, all that Kanoha adds to its forces in a year, then that's a cruel misconception. Apart from the main academy, there are also its branches where they train the basic meat, never rising above genin. In the main building, clan children, children from merchant clans, and families of the village's elite are trained, sometimes from hereditary shinobi families and rare prodigies who stand out from the gray mass of secondary schools or just lucky ones who have received an excellent opportunity to study among the future military elite. Additionally, each clan trains its genin, who directly integrate into the ranks of the shinobi. And let's not forget about the genin sent from small clans living outside Kanahagakur on the territory of the Fire Country. So, in the end, a decent number of people are recruited, not just the nine individuals graduating from the Shinobi Academy. However, judging by the chronicles, there have been cases of graduating everyone who passed the final exam, especially during wartime. I think during the Second Great Ninja War, something similar will be practiced. 
Ryukuen, you should socialize more with your peers, not just with Shikaku and his clique, mom frowned, distracting me from my excursion into the depths of memory. If I'm ten times smarter and more mature than the rest, what's the point? I shrugged. It's better to fully prepare for my ninja career than to regret wasting time later. Besides, my survival depends on it. Oh Ryu, sometimes I regret how quickly you've grown up, mom sighed. But then I wouldn't be as magnificent and amazing, I raised my nose and puffed out my chest in a burst of pride. Especially now, she chuckled. Okay, enough boasting, I cut myself off, biting my thumb, I ran it over my left wrist with added chakra and threw the unrolled scroll to mom, this is the complete process of creating the raisin gan in the smallest detail, once you learn it, burn it. Everything necessary for training is sealed at the bottom, so you can start right here, I nodded, only the two of us will know about the Raisingan for now, and since it will be a family jutsu, don't teach it to anyone else. If something is unclear or you get stuck, you can ask me. Okay, thank you Ryukuen. Don't mention it, Kachan, I waved away the thanks, I'll be in my room. Turning around, I left the training ground and returned home. I hope this will be enough to increase the chances of Sai returning alive. As far as I remember, the Second World Ninja War lasted more than 10 years or so, so I'll still have a chance to participate in it. Considering the fact that it was as a genin that Nawaki died in the war, there is a very high probability that I will find myself on the front lines immediately after graduating from the Shinobi Academy. Therefore, the later I get into it, the more time I will have to prepare and prove myself as a strategist, rather than just another piece of meat closing the gaps on the front lines. All that remains is to hope that the relatives of the main clans won't be used in a similar way, otherwise, revenge on the guilty will be added to our goals, I love Sai too much to react differently to her death. Hey, Ryu. What? Lazily opening one eye, I glanced sideways to see Shikaku's grinning face. What do you want? Did you really decide to indulge in the traditional Nara activity and nap on the grass? My cousin exclaimed, sitting down next to me. What about your challenging training? Haha, you can keep being amazed, I replied faintly, continuing to lie and bask in the sun. I've had a legitimate day off for I don't know how long, so I'm relaxing. Behind my brilliant ten-year-old relative, I noticed a gathering of Choza, Inoichi, and another Nara guy, what was his name, ah, Enzui. Hey guys, what are you doing here in the company of this, troublesome, slacker? Don't you have academy today? Akamichi, as usual, chewing on something delicious, responded. We had a, m, test today and got off early, Akamichi replied, as always, chewing on something tasty. I see, share your supplies. Stretching out my hand demandingly, I sat up and fully opened my eyes. Are you sure you have half Uzumaki blood, not Akamichi? Inzui chuckled, watching as Choza and I happily devoured ham sandwiches. My dad told me that your parent used to compete with him in the eating contests held in their restaurants, Akamichi mumbled, chewing. That's what they call eating competitions among this clan of food lovers, held in their restaurants. Well, we also grow big and wide, not just for techniques, I clapped my friend on the shoulder. A real man should be big and strong, and eat a lot too. Exactly. Choza nodded enthusiastically, still munching away. That's how I bonded with the good-natured chubby guy, even though he was two years younger. Well, and a significant reason is the opportunity to feast on provisions. That's the way to respond, otherwise the wind might blow you away, I glanced at both Naras. Even in early childhood, I ate more than all of you combined now. Choza, feed them, otherwise you'll end up with such weaklings in your team, then you'll have to carry them yourself. Hey, don't include me in their company, Inoichi immediately distanced himself. Unlike these two, I take physical training seriously. Well, scrutinizing the blonde critically, I shook my head. Not that it's noticeable, but definitely better than these slackers. Hey, we're Naras, my clanmates protested in unison. Troublesome. Guess who said that? The day Naras stop being lazy can be considered the end of the clan. And besides, you should be lazy too, it's our distinctive feature, along with our brilliant minds, Shikaku lectured, raising his finger. And you are more of an exception to the rule. It's too troublesome for me to listen to my mom's lectures that, your cousin, in addition to having equally brilliant brains, also has truly respectable perseverance and almost complete lack of laziness, despite a mere two-year difference. I'm also terribly lazy, I sighed. It's just that I know how to suppress that trait in favor of my development as a shinobi. We have a war looming ahead, so there's a huge chance to participate in it, so depending on the skills and preparation you have, the chances of survival increase. Do you think it's all that bleak? Enzui asked. Well, judging by the recently ended war, nothing good awaits us. 
By the way, here, take this, found a cool historical book in our clan library, I threw the memoirs I had read in my early childhood to my brother lying nearby on the grass. I wanted to give it to you earlier, but kept forgetting. It's right on topic. Just return it in one piece later. Wow, this is from the times of clan wars, Yamanaka exclaimed, grabbing the book before Shiki. And what's it about, the chubby guy asked, interested, as the trio suddenly fell silent, slowly turning red as they read new pages. Hee <laughs> hee, infecting young minds with the virus of hentai and loot hunting. Cough, the life of a shinobi without embellishments during the clan wars, I coughed, trying to hide the laughter threatening to burst out. Your ancestor Nara Yagami was quite lively, Inoichi finally tore his eyes away from the reading, looking quite embarrassed. Where did you dig up this thing? Inzui chuckled. I've never noticed anything like that in our library. Oh, I found it somewhere behind the shelves, I don't remember exactly, it was about five years ago, I shrugged. And you read it at three or four years old? My brother was amazed. Yep, true, at that time not everything was clear, but I grasped the essence of the trophies. I replied, proudly puffing out my chest. Oh no, Saya will kill you if she finds out, Shikaku groaned. And me too, along with the idiot who left such a thing within children's reach. Troublesome. Don't worry, it's quite a realistic book, I don't think there'll be anything else going on in the war now, I waved off the panicker. We need to learn from our ancestors' experiences. I see, that's all you do, train and stay busy almost round the clock, Shika shook his head. Even though I have to exert myself now, it'll increase my chances of survival later, I shrugged. Anyway, tell me more about how the academy is this year? They're driving us like slaves, and Zui briefly interrupted his reading. Basics of Genjutsu and Ninjutsu, increased emphasis on Taijutsu, selection of individual style for each, survival course in various terrains, basics of client escort and protection. And thank the gods, they finally finished the general education subjects. Mine just started, I shrugged. But in the end, the ability to write, read, understand geography, economics, have an idea of the country's power structure and history will help future shinobi develop comprehensively, not just study ways to swing limbs and throw cool techniques. Interesting, how will that help us in battle? Inoichi shrugged. To be a shinobi is not just about fighting all the time, but also carrying out missions, my brother explained. If you're given incorrect information or there are additional factors affecting the mission, you have to decide, based on the situation, which course of action will be more attractive, both for the executor, you, and the client, or it may be more beneficial for the village to fail the mission and quietly eliminate the client. Comprehensive development and knowledge of the current situation on the global political stage, as well as relations between countries, can significantly facilitate making a difficult decision. You're just like my dad lecturing, Yamanaka chuckled. But overall, despite the tedium, there's some benefit from these subjects. Ugh, now with Senju, you can't even sleep in class. Shikaku complained, rubbing his forehead and ignoring the others giggling. Yeah, the first time he tried to doze off with the new teacher, he got smacked on the head with a ruler. Inzui smirked. Hey, you got hit too, so no need to gloat. Oh come on, we need something to argue about, the blondes grimaced and turned to me. By the way, have you heard the rumor about additional training organized by Senju? No, what are you talking about? Well, besides taking over the academy, the founders recently announced the opening of a retraining course for all genin-ranked shinobi. Eh, I don't get it. Inoichikuen means that seeing the overall level of education, the Senju decided to raise the level of those who have already graduated but have not yet reached the rank of chunin, Shikaku explained. With the war looming, it's quite relevant, albeit entirely voluntary. Hmm, a very sensible move, both tactically and politically. It's the same as with the academy, but here they're investing in the near future with the possibility of influencing established shinobi who haven't yet risen in rank. I bet after these courses, many genin will be able to vie for higher ranks and it's clear who they'll be grateful to. And the most interesting thing is that the Hokage and his assistants won't dare to say anything, since Senju's actions clearly do not harm the village, and the increase in the influence of the clan of the first two Hokages is just an additional bonus. And you can't argue with that. Who would have thought that Toka Senju had such a grip? Personally, I wouldn't have thought of such an apparently obvious opportunity. Casting a quick glance at my brother, I saw that he understood the whole point of this event, once again proving his good understanding of the motives of clan movements on the village's political stage and the mindset suitable for the heir of the clan head. Considering his age of 10, it's a great achievement for someone who doesn't have decades of knowledge and experience like myself. And how long will these courses last? 
about a year, considering the impending war, a significant help to the Genin. Well, at the very beginning, they won't send them to the slaughter, and by the time additional forces are needed, the Hokage will have well-prepared shinobi at his disposal, and then the academy graduates will come in. Is the Hokage here, the head of the root organization peeked into the village ruler's office. Come in, Danzo, Sarutobi nodded towards the chair in front of his desk and waited for the visitor to settle in comfortably. At the moment, I'm only interested in one question, what do your spies in the Uzumaki clan say? Considering the imminent combat actions, I want to be sure about our rear. The veteran grimaced disgustingly at the question and stared at the floor, slowly seething with anger. Danzo? I don't have any more spies. Shimura spat out with hatred, raising his gaze to the Hokage. The damned redheads have wiped them all out over the past few years. Messages from the last one of the infiltrators stopped coming about two months ago. It was evident that despite his firm conviction in the necessity of controlling emotions, the head of Root was deeply troubled by the failure of personally trained shinobi in such an important matter. What news was in the last report, the third asked after a brief silence. The Uzumaki have been preparing something very important over the past year, judging by the secrecy surrounding it, but my man couldn't find out the details, he was supposed to try to thoroughly investigate all the rumors and find someone who could shed light on the secret. As it's obvious now, unsuccessfully. This is bad, very bad, murmured Hiruzen, pulling out and lighting his pipe. Without a full deployment of forces, I won't be able to plan the upcoming campaign, and I'll have to leave a significant number of shinobi in the village just in case of a sudden attack from another of the great villages. Not the Uzumaki? Shimura raised his eyebrows questioningly. They have enough of their own concerns, and they're too proud to be the first to attack a recent ally. Besides, they're relatives of the Senju, and they won't go against their own, understand, the village chief puffed his pipe meaningfully. I understand. All plans to weaken the Senju will have to be postponed indefinitely, Danzo grimaced. Exactly. By the way, about them, withdraw your people from the Uzumaki and the founders, the Hokage ordered. Maitasama and Tokasama visited me the other day with quite understandable displeasure about your goons. But? No, buts. Let the old ladies die, then you can put surveillance, Haruzan cut him off. For now, it's too dangerous to touch them, and our relations are already too tense to add fuel to the fire. And what about the vessel's security? It's not a vessel yet, and it won't be for at least another year. By monitoring them, you'll only increase the chances of the spies exposing the Jinchuriki, both current and future. It's easier to hide a candle among other candles. Do you understand me? So there shouldn't even be a hint that we're interested in Kushina Uzumaki. Right now, she's just Mito-sama's relative and one of many Uzumaki, let her stay that way. During her training at the academy, she'll be monitored by the Senju, and then her sensei will take care of it. Alright, Hokage-sama. I won't keep you any longer. Hey, Shinisu, over here. The head of the Nara clan, who had just entered the bar to have a couple of bottles of sake and soothe his greatly shaken nerves, jerked and looked around. We're here, seeing the familiar outlines of a couple of close friends in the farthest and darkest corner of the hall, he headed towards them. Inoda, Choji, what are you doing here? Nara asked, pulling out a chair for himself and sitting down. We just decided to take a little break from clan affairs, Akamichi replied. And what are you doing here? Especially knowing your wife's attitude towards visiting bars, the blonde smirked, teasing his friend good-naturedly. Ah? Uh? I'm just soothing my nerves, haven't been able to relax properly for the past couple of months, the shinobi sighed heavily, resting his head on the table and closing his eyes. Preparing for war, the chubby man nodded understandingly. If only it were that. And what else? Saya decided to return to active duty, and for almost two months now she's been training almost non-stop, Shinisu reported. Eh, and what's so bad about that for you? Yamanaka was surprised. The thing is, Ryokuen is left without his usual taijutsu sparring partner, and guess who he turned to, getting up from the table, Nara glared sternly at his friends. Wait, but hasn't he just turned eight recently? How can he cause you so much trouble that you're so exhausted? Why not just pass him on to Shikaku and be done with it? Akamichi wondered. And you think I haven't tried? He knocked him out in literally half a minute of the fight, not even exerting himself. You know, Shens, it's hard to believe that an eight-year-old kid, who hasn't even started at the academy and hasn't learned the basics of proper taijutsu, they start at nine, before that they just develop their bodies, can quickly put down an opponent two years older and who has studied in the shinobi academy for a couple of years, the chubby man shook his head. You know, I thought the same until Nechan told me what warm-up Ryo does every morning before breakfast, 
Not every Chunin can do something like that without collapsing from exhaustion, Nara snorted. And in every sparring session with his son, Saya doesn't hold back the force of her blows. What? She could kill him like that. You forget who his father is, Shinisu sighed and emptied the sake cup handed to him in one gulp. I also underestimated him very much the first time. And what happened? Akamichi asked sympathetically. What happened, what happened? I ended up paralyzed, with bruised balls, and a broken nose, the clan head exclaimed, tears welling up as he emptied another cup. Ho, how, ha ha ha, how did you manage that, the blonde couldn't help but laugh. That little demon turned out to be very fast for his age, and by moving within striking distance, he paralyzed the left side of my body with two touches and, hitting me between the legs, smashed my face with all his might, the victim grumbled. Who would have told me that a child could hit like that, I wouldn't have believed it. At this point, the chubby man couldn't hold back, bursting into thunderous laughter along with Inoda, drawing the attention of other bar patrons. Well, Shen, you really blew it with the kid. Yamanaka grinned, somewhat calming down. But how did he manage to paralyze you? With a seal? But then why only half of your body? Not with a seal, he just touched me in two places and I lost feeling in the left side of my body. Wait, isn't it that Ryokuen recently, literally a few months ago, finished training at the hospital? I heard that someone from your clan managed to achieve 5th degree medical ninjutsu mastery at the age of 7, Inoda recalled. That's him, Nara nodded. I personally asked Ikamaru to take him for training after Otosan ordered him to enroll in the new group of medical students. And Ishidano contributed to this, the blonde was surprised. But didn't he distance himself from clan affairs after handing over his power to you? Exactly, but he harbors no ill will towards this little monster and indulges him in every way, Nara grimaced. Not that I object, he's a smart kid and can match Shikaku in intelligence, but, he's a real monster when it comes to learning or training. If I tried to even come close to his daily schedule, I would have been in the grave long ago. MMM, are you exaggerating? Choji cautiously asked, pushing another bottle of sake closer. Exaggerating? Am I exaggerating? Ha, huh, I'm more downplaying it. Nara exclaimed. If you want, I can tell you, and then you'll understand everything yourselves. Go ahead, we're curious to know what kind of genius you're raising, Yamanaka smirked. Well then, let's start with our sparring sessions, taking a sip from the cup, he sighed. Ryo hits at full force. What? Yes. In our training, I only slightly restrain the speed to be on par with an experienced Chunin and completely unleash the force of the blow. The only condition is not to hit in places where one blow can guarantee the death not only of the child but also of an adult, and otherwise, there are no restrictions. And how long does he last, the chubby man chuckled. You should ask, how long I last, Shinisu tiredly smiled. Even after taking the most powerful blow, Ryo comes to his senses in a couple of seconds, heals if necessary, and throws himself back into battle. You can't imagine how exhausting it is, to see all your attacks hit the target, but not achieve the desired effect. And what's even more annoying is that my opponent is an 8-year-old kid. And how long does such training last? From 1 to 3 hours almost every other day, and sometimes more often, two wet tracks ran down the lazy shinobi's face. Now I can't even sleep during the day, every time he's nearby, I have to go and train that little demon again. His friends didn't share such a tragic view of the situation and tried their best to suppress their laughter. It's not funny. I'd like to see you in such a situation. Sorry, Shen, but it's too funny to hear how you're bothered by an eight-year-old nephew. And you can't even refuse him. No aside. Why? After the first two times, I tried to get out of it with work, he agreed and ran away. The next day the situation repeated itself, but Setsurachan was nearby, and for the whole next week, I slept on the couch and nursed bruises with a promise to repeat the disciplinary process if it happens again. The two friends nodded sympathetically, both of them had felt the heavy hand of the Kunoichi, one of the best in their clan in Taijutsu, even in their young years. The only thing that comforts me is that she also took part in some of the sparring, the distressed shinobi side. According to Setsura, after three to four years of such intensive training, Ryo will be able to knock down the vast majority of Chunin and even many Jonin, not specializing in Taijutsu, and will make everyone else work hard for victory. Considering his endurance inherited from his father and the ability to heal himself almost on the go, I have no doubt about it. And he only switched from academic style to learning Goken and the main Uzumaki style, Yuzu Ken, six months ago. Ryo Kuen is going to focus on hand-to-hand -hand combat, the blonde chuckled. If only, he considers medicine his main direction. I personally spoke with Ikamaru, and you know what he said? What? 
That Ryo has an amazingly bright mind. He grasps almost everything on the fly, and even older children who studied in the same group look downright bleak against him. And that's not all. While everyone else with varying degrees of difficulty went through the basic course in medical ninjutsu, he asked to be given additional literature and studied it simultaneously. Ikemaru said he rarely saw such diligence, perseverance, and understanding of such a complex subject as medicine at such a young age. Actually, I felt on my own experience how he can not only apply the knowledge gained in battle but also heal. And if my nephew doesn't slow down his progress, he'll get the status of a full-fledged medical ninja in six months to a year. I've heard they're already comparing him to the second Tsunade Senju at the hospital. Naturally, not in terms of skills, but in terms of the potential he has, but it's still impressive. You know, if Shikaku hadn't inherited your laziness, you would have had two treasures like that now, Inoda seriously nodded. Haha, <laughs> yeah, Otosan walks around like a cream-covered cat these past one and a half to two years, Shinisu snorted, and keeps saying that in ten years everyone will be marveling at the first S-class shinobi from our clan since the founding of Kanoha. Very possible, Choji nodded, and what does Ryo himself say? He wants to become a jonin by the age of 15, and by 20, be stronger than the Hokage students. Wow, that's aiming high. And he has every chance of realizing his dreams, the blonde nodded, if he's already this strong at 8, then with age, he'll undoubtedly be among Kanoha's elite. Either as a hand-to-hand -hand combatant or as a medic. You think that's all? Our elders who train shinobi in the clan are simply delighted with him, he grasps all the regular subjects without the slightest problem. And if there were some minor problems with Clan Jutsu due to missing more than half a year, now he has surpassed all his peers, not least because of the huge reserves of chakra inherent in all Uzumaki. And let's not forget about Fuin Jutsu, it's thanks to training seals that he's been able to advance so far in Taijutsu. So we also have a seal master on the way, which is most relevant in today's times. Listen, you're saying he's doing Taijutsu, Yamanaka began to list, bending his fingers, training his body, studying to be a medic and doing an internship at the hospital, learning Fuinjutsu, also clan training. Training in chakra control, Shinisu added. Training in chakra control and without any problem studying subjects from civilian school, how does he manage all this? Even if there were 30 hours in a day, it wouldn't be enough for everything. The answer to that question is simple, Nara sighed, taking the sake cup and drinking the warmed sake, Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. A clone goes to the hospital and studies medical treatises, a clone trains chakra, a clone learns school subjects, and Ryo himself does everything else and sometimes everything listed above when he wants to change direction. Kage Bunshin? Uzumaki style Kenjutsu? But that's dangerous, the chubby man exclaimed worriedly. It requires too much chakra to create and maintain. Even my amount of chakra probably wouldn't be enough for more than seven or eight full-fledged clones. And this puts a heavy burden on the mind when using clones in this way, Inoda added grimly. At this rate, he'll burn himself out and could end up with brain damage from not coping with the influx of information. Do you think I don't know that? But our little genius also realizes this and doesn't create more than five at a time, although he's capable of more. Moreover, he disperses each clone separately and during meditation to assimilate all the learned information and eliminate any risk, Nara explained. And when does he rest? Akamichi asked. Never. Nara shrugged. Two hours for meditation in the evening, five to six hours of full sleep, and all the rest of the time for study, training, and practice. I tried to make him take even short breaks every couple of days, but no success yet. He's not a Nara, I can tell you that for sure. And Saya, under his influence, has become stronger in recent years despite the long absence of practice, now she wins three out of five of our sparring matches. And maybe it's you who's starting to slack off and get too lazy, the chubby man slapped his shoulder friendly. Hey! You know, Ryo Kuen could become the next clan head instead of Shikaku, Inoda smirked cunningly. God forbid! Shinisu shuddered. Our clan would be doomed! You mean your laziness would be doomed, the two friends laughed. Only over my dead body. I want to spend my old age in warmth and peace. And your wives will be so happy. The blonde chuckled nastily. Nara gave a gloomy look at the laughing pair but didn't say anything. All right, let's drink to the next generation, Choji declared, raising the sake cup, may they be stronger than us and survive the upcoming war. Cheers. Cheers. Sinking into the couch in the break room, I breathed a sigh of relief and closed my eyes. Dealing with patients like these always requires not only physical strength but also mental fortitude. Ryo Kuen. Turning my head and opening my right eye slightly, I saw a familiar face, this girl and I attended courses together. Hey, Yuzu-chan, I waved in response. 
How's your latest patient? Better, another week and we can discharge her, I hope, settling in more comfortably, I fully opened my eyes to avoid offending the girl with neglect. Honestly, in cases like this, you get more tired than if you were treating severe wounds. What can you do? Kunoichi used to lie for a couple of months before they could be discharged, and even then, they didn't always return to duty. But now, with your help, they're handling mental traumas in just two weeks, the intern smiled, sitting down next to me. And honestly, I understand them, with such a sweetheart nearby. Just don't get too touchy, I'm too tired and want to rest during my break, I lean back a bit. Yeah, thinking about practice, I never thought I'd end up playing the role of a psychiatrist on top of everything. More precisely, about a month after starting full-time work, I was assigned a rather complex case. Complex not in terms of injuries and such, but in terms of communication with the patient. We have a lot of kunoichi in our 20,000-strong staff, and cases of rape occur quite often, at least once or twice a month. Risks of the profession. Mostly Jenin and Chunin suffer, but the very first case turned out to be quite rare, a full-fledged Jonin was caught by missing Nin and, oddly enough, survived. Usually, victims are killed on the spot, as I learned from conversations among hospital staff, but the most beautiful ones are sometimes left alive, the hand didn't rise, I suppose. So they sent me to her as a test to see how I would behave and to gauge her reaction, she didn't let men near her. That's when it turned out that they didn't perceive me as a man, and my boyish face and young age had a positive effect on the victim. Motherly instinct? And considering my superficial knowledge of psychology, the role of a shoulder to cry on along with a cuddle buddy was assigned to me. Which predictably led to a rapid improvement in the Kunoichi's condition. Since then, I've been accustomed to being put in charge of such patients, as the hospital staff joked, working as a red plush teddy bear. However, the hospital is mostly staffed by women, and I'm considered their little darling, so nothing new. Despite the fact that such cases are quite emotionally taxing, the end result still brings immense satisfaction. Seeing broken and shattered women bloom again and cope with the tragedy they've endured, it's an incomparable pleasure. And the fact that a beauty kissed me for the first time in my life can't be counted as a downside. Of course, the profession of a shinobi prepares you for possible risks, including such, but even if the kunoichi withstands what happened and doesn't change her behavior, fear still arises inside, both of recurrence and of the opposite sex. That's what we treat, along with regular wounds. By the way, all medical personnel are given an informal order to remove pregnancies without notifying women, there were cases of deterioration after such news, up to suicide attempts. I can't say it was difficult for me, but there was some unease. I don't think I could have gotten rid of an already formed child with such cold-bloodedness. In general, working at the main hospital, I began to understand the cynicism and dark humor of doctors, when you deal with the underbelly of human society, you start to see things differently. Unfortunately, not only the wounded end up with us. Organ transplants, which pose no special problems for an experienced medic, abortion, victims of fights between shinobi, their own, treatment of the consequences of alcohol and drug poisoning and addictions, correction of the psyche of children who have suffered psychological trauma from witnessing murder, and similar cases. Of course, not all of them are visible, but a sufficiently observant person can easily put two and two together, drawing the right conclusion from the slips, unspoken words, and overheard chatter of doctors. Oh yes, I forgot to mention the dirty laundry of clans and the almost complete absence of prohibitions for shinobi, especially clan ones. You could say that ordinary people and shinobi are two different branches of human development, with the former being quite clear, while the latter, despite greater physical perfection, turned out to be morally closer to a pack of predators. Hence, the absence of some moral taboos, in particular regarding the choice of partners, the age difference and even the degree of kinship are almost not taken into account. Especially in clans. Given that most clans conduct selection to strengthen the born shinobi and consolidate the kekiai genkai in future generations, pairs like brother and sister don't surprise anyone. Especially in the Uchiha and Hyuga clans. And it's all because of the presence of chakra in shinobi, thanks to it, genetic monsters are not born at all, children grow up healthy and hardly ever get sick. As I learned from scrolls on the subject, during the formation of the embryo, a huge amount of chakra released by the parents contributes to the correction of various defects, and the constant influence of the mother's chakra throughout pregnancy allows the fetus to use even someone else's chakra for proper formation. Overall, thanks to the development of chakra, shinobi recover from wounds about 10 times faster than ordinary people, even without kekiai genkai like mine. Of course, there are also mental traumas, but that's where the Yamanaka and Uchiha with their memory manipulation techniques come in, but that's another story.
True, the latter rarely go into medicine with an activated Sharingan, but there are still two of them. Women. It's a rarity for this clan in itself, as is the profession of a medic. Suddenly, the door to the break room swung open, and a breathless nurse appeared in the doorway. All available staff to rooms 207 and 209, we've received about a dozen wounded, and we're short on medics, she announced, then noticing there were only two of us here, she added, Ryo Kuen, you're needed in room 9, it's a more serious case. I'm known throughout the hospital. On my way, I replied, sighing as I got up from the couch and hurried towards the stairs to the second floor, with Yuzu following behind me. Well, that was a short break. As soon as I opened the door to the ward, catching a glimpse of the bloody mess vaguely resembling a kunoichi on the operating table, the second floor of the hospital is reserved exclusively for severely injured and surgical cases, while the third and fourth are for moderate and light patients, and a woman in traditional attire with a cap, they immediately started giving me orders. Just one? And a trainee at that? Damn it. Take over the heart function, the rest isn't as critical for now. Can you handle it, the woman commanded, pointing at each clone. I'll deal with the broken ribs and second lung for now. How long can you hold out? At least two hours, I answered. An hour and a half. An hour and a half. You, create another one and deal with the abdominal wound, at this rate, we'll be done in 40 minutes. Pausing my technique for a moment, I formed the seal, and after a puff of smoke, returned to my task, no longer paying attention to those around me. With ten hands working, even if only one of us was tending to the wound, and the others were sustaining life in the mangled body, the work progressed quickly. Judging by the nature of the injuries, the kunoichi had been hit by a doton technique, and it was unclear how she had survived until she was brought to the hospital. As the unknown doctor had said, we managed to finish in just over 40 minutes, by which time my chakra was beginning to run out. But even focused on my task, I observed out of the corner of my eye as the experienced medic collected rib fragments, repaired damaged lung tissue, stitched torn muscles, and even regenerated skin. My third clone gave way to the master and began working on the legs, but even with lighter wounds, he struggled much longer and with not as excellent results. In the end, when I dispelled my clones and regained all the memories along with the remaining chakra, I discovered that the difference in skill between the kunoichi, she had a hitaiate on her arm, and me was immense. Of course, with chakra and another hour or three, I could have managed, but not to such a result, lying on the table in front of us was a naked, blood-covered, but completely intact girl of 19 or 20, perhaps a bit skinny and pale, but incomparable to the mess they brought in. Heck, she even managed to restore her breasts, despite the fact that there were only shreds of meat left from one. Phew, we did it, stepping aside, I slumped into a chair, not wanting to distract or interfere with the final diagnosis. We did it, the medic agreed and, a couple of minutes later, slumped heavily onto the adjacent chair, congratulations, kid, you've earned the rank of full-fledged fourth-degree medic. Wow. But I didn't really treat much, I tried to argue. Not that I wasn't happy, but I doubted that about six months of work was enough to get the next promotion, and comparing the quality of my work to that of my colleagues, I could only shake my head and envy. It doesn't matter, in a critical situation, you didn't lose your composure, and that's the most important thing in our profession, the woman smiled. Her face looks familiar, she reminds me of someone. Running my gaze up and down her figure for a moment, I noted her large breasts, which were clearly visible even in a sitting position and in a medic's uniform, all the curves were in the right places, and I caught on the lock of light hair that had slipped out from under her cap. For a trainee, you did exceptionally well with abdominal and leg wounds too, she praised me, removing her headgear and shaking out her mane of light hair. Sunade Sinju? Some of our new medics would have done worse. And even without your help, managing such massive injuries while simultaneously sustaining life would have been too difficult for me. You could say the girl owes her life fully to you. Blonde hair, check, huge breasts, check, crystal on the forehead, also check. She's definitely the real Tsunade Senju. What luck to meet her. Although, considering where I work, it would have happened sooner or later. But why haven't I seen her before? Was she on missions with her team? Or did I just not pay attention? Very possible, since starting practice, my workload has increased even more, and there hasn't been much time to look around. While I openly stared at her, especially at her face and the crystal peeking out from under her bangs, Tsunade fell silent and for the first time during our time working together, she looked me over carefully, lingering on my hair. She even adjusted a strand that had come loose from my ponytail and was hanging over my right eye. I assume you're Rio Nara? Tsunade said more affirmatively. That's me, I replied, somewhat taken aback. Taking another look at his presumed relative, 
He made a note in the section, dreams to fulfill when I grow up, to try to sneak into her bed. After all, who doesn't dream of, him sleeping with a princess, especially when she has such outstanding features. And even at his twenty-something, she looks about five years younger, I guess it's the grandma genes at play. I've heard about you, smirked the future Sanin, haven't they worn you out here yet? Judging by the amount of excitement, especially from the female staff, they very well could have. I'm managing to fend them off successfully, I grimaced, feeling my confidence wane, when it's an isolated case, it's still somewhat flattering, but when almost every woman past her mid-twenties unleashes her maternal instinct at the sight of such a cute child, it's not funny anymore. I remember crowds of admirers chasing after your father when he first arrived here, sighed Senju dreamily, and judging by everything, you'll look even better than him in a decade, at least you've already got your admirers. Unable to resist, I mimicked a facepalm gesture and leaned back in my chair, feeling my confidence dissolve as I realized that my manga fans were solely due to the twisted will of the author. Do they really exist? I blurted out. To my outburst, Tsunade just laughed and tousled my hair. Wonderful, just wonderful. As if I didn't have enough to worry about, now there's another one added to the list. And not just among the female population, there were admirers after me too, you know, because marrying into the Senju princess could bring you a lot, but I made sure that didn't happen, she grinned menacingly, clenching her fist. Oh yes, we're familiar with such care, especially with the way it's delivered, rumors about the future great medic's monstrous strength have been circulating in the village seemingly since before I was born. And Tsunade's lonely fate before meeting Dan is understandable, what woman would want to marry a man who hunts for dowry? And why should I have these admirers? I sighed, asking a rhetorical question. Get used to it, now that you'll be a full-fledged medic at the age of eight, there will be even more of them, and not just because of your charm, smirked the Kunoichi, especially if the rumors about the three clan heads getting drunk have any truth to them. What drunkenness? I was surprised. Why haven't I heard anything? If I'm not mistaken, it was last week, I had just returned to the village with the team and we were celebrating the successful completion of a mission, scratched Tsunade's head, someone overheard a loose-lipped Shinisu and then spread the word about your achievements to friends. Especially that part where you managed to catch him and put him down in training, as well as your successes in the hospital and the forecast about your future rank as an S from the Nara clan. You've been talked about before, but nothing concrete, and now your name is on everyone's lips among the shinobi. Of course, some don't believe it, but considering what I witnessed today, rumors about two little geniuses from the Nara clan seem to have some basis. Last week? And around the same time, I started feeling an increase in way too many curious looks, I thought aloud, well, Aji-san. Kachan and Setsuro Obachan will tear you apart when they find out. And I won't just stop at a kick in the balls. Haha, <laughs> serves that lazy bum right? Senju laughed. Well, our work for today is done. So let's go to the restroom, and then I'll arrange your promotion papers. Let's go, I nodded, considering the end of the shift is approaching, I don't want to waste what little chakra I have left. In the corridor, the blonde caught the first nurse she could find rushing around the floor and ordered her to take care of the patient, moving her to a separate room, despite the fact that the injuries were healed, the victim would still need at least another two weeks, if not a month, to recover. Once in the empty break room, Tsunade brewed tea and offered homemade cookies for a snack. So, comfortably settled on the old couch together, we continued our conversation. Tell me, why do you have the same seal on your forehead as I do, asked the third student and then quickly added, if you don't want to answer, you don't have to, I'm not insisting. Judging by the curious looks, she had wanted to ask about it since she recognized me, but hesitated. Among shinobi who value the secrecy of their techniques, such questions are considered impolite, and some might even resort to violence or challenge to a duel. A gift from Jisan when I visited Yuzushiogakure. You've been to the village of Uzumaki, the blonde was surprised. After Tasan's funeral, we went for six months, I nodded affirmatively, feeling a bit down. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know, sympathetically, Senju hugged me by the shoulders, burying my face in her huge bosom, considering my size, it was indeed huge. Nodding, I sniffled slightly and frowned, no sniffing allowed. Unfortunately, at that moment heavy footsteps echoed in the corridor with the clacking of wooden sandals, and the door to the break room burst open with a crash. Tsunade-chan. Tsunade-sama is looking for you, a tall blonde guy in the standard jonin uniform and ridiculous wooden sandals stormed in. Damn, is that Jiraiya himself? Judging by the kanji oil on his Hitai 8, it's him in the flesh. And he already has a toad summoning contract. Tsunade, glancing around, the toad hermit noticed us and in the same second his serious shinobi expression turned into a downright smirk. 
Oh, are you going to breastfeed? Dibs, I'm first in line. Damn, leave it to the pervert to ruin the atmosphere. And I had a decent chance to feel the princess's luxurious bosom. Yeah, hormones haven't fully kicked in yet, but they've definitely been stirring in the past couple of months. Along with the rapid growth of my body, which is quite telling. Lost in my own thoughts, I missed the moment when Tsunade disappeared from the couch and ended up near her team member. There was a muffled sound of impact, and the whole room shook from its power, and the pervert mimicked the letter O with his mouth and slumped to the floor, held by Senju. Jiraiya Baka. Can you not flaunt your libido for a minute? Yeah, another proof of the endurance of S-rank Shinobi, an ordinary person would have been turned into a bloody mess by such a blow, judging by its impact. Is he okay? I asked worriedly, observing the pervert's rolled back eyes. Don't worry, he'll be good as new in a few minutes, the blonde waved it off, unfortunately, I have to go now, so you'll come to your curator tomorrow for the documents. Okay, Tsunade-sama. And also, keep in mind that not only ordinary shinobi and townsfolk will be watching you now, but also the clans. What do the clans have to do with it? Clans always carefully watch anyone who shows even a hint of talent, wishing to strengthen their own positions by influencing strong personalities through marriage and future children, Tsunade explained, and weaken the positions of everyone else, even by luring promising fighters away. So, as a distant relative, I consider it my duty to warn you, don't let just anyone approach you and always seek out who benefits from tying you with any bonds. Thank you. Yeah, if not for meeting her, I could have remained in the dark for a long time. No, eventually, I would have figured out what was going on, but it's better to know about the hunt set on you in advance. See you soon, Ryukun. Tsunade approached me, leaned in, and hugged me. At that moment, my head ended up in her impressive cleavage, and feeling the velvety skin against my face, I slowly but surely started to blush. Damn, why now? Fortunately, she didn't notice it and, breaking the embrace, grabbed the shinobi lying on the floor by the collar and dragged him to the door. But Jiraiya had already come to and rewarded me with an envious glance. Unable to contain his mischievous nature, I spread into a grin so similar to his own lustful smile and looked down at him condescendingly. And while they dragged the toad hermit across the floor, I watched two wet streaks run down his face and a grimace of black envy. Yes, an eight-year-old did that to you. Bushganga. Hmm, got a bit carried away there. Ikimaru-sensei, I peeked into the curator's office, are you busy? Come in, Ryu Kuen, I've just finished processing your transfer and prepared the license with the employment contract, my fellow clan member waved at me, raising his head from the papers. Will much change with my promotion? I asked, settling into the visitor's chair. It depends on what you mean by change, the teacher chuckled, if you're referring to work, then no. You'll still be treating patients, just now with a slightly higher salary and bonuses every quarter, as well as accruing experience. But. With the new license, you'll be able to access the hospital library, without any restrictions except for the most dangerous sections, accessible only to first and second degree medics. The hospital has its own library? I was surprised. I hadn't come across it during all my time working there. Not in the main building, but behind it, Ikimaru smirked, perhaps you've noticed a small one-story building behind this wing, that's it. Such a small one? Unfortunately, the medical base was only with the Senju and our clan, so you'll hardly find much new there compared to the clan library, but there's undoubtedly something useful there. I can guarantee that. Hmm, okay. So, sign your contract and surrender your old license, the medic handed me the papers, and after reading through the short list of points, I signed them and handed them back with my ID card. Excellent, the teacher rummaged in his desk and pulled out an almost exact copy of the surrendered license, handing it to me with a solemn expression. Congratulations, Ryu Kuen, now you're one of us. You still have a lot to strive for, so don't stop at what you've achieved. And as a small gift for the occasion, personally from me, and also from Senjusama. Keep giving reasons for your sensei to be proud. Digging into the pockets of his robe, he pulled out two scrolls, sealed with the marks of the Nara and Senju. Thank you, with a respectful bow, I accepted them and examined them. What are these? I don't know about Tsunade-sama's scroll, but from me, it's absolutely necessary technique for every man, my clan member winked with a smile I was already familiar with. You'll thank me in a few years. After bowing, I left the office and immediately sat down on one of the benches in the corridor, starting to unroll the scroll with the mark of my clan, my sensei's words had piqued my interest. Well, I've unrolled it, started reading, and felt my eyes bulging out of my head. Well done, sensei. If I were a girl, I'd kiss you. He was right, a gift for the future. I wonder if all male medics give scrolls like these, or is it just out of the kindness of my clanmate's heart? 
In any case, this scroll will definitely come in handy for me. After all, you don't get to hold in your hands the dream of most men for equipment enhancement every day, so to speak. Hmm, and come to think of it, all female medics in the hospital have excellent figures, despite almost universal singleness and not a single flat-chested one, if you don't count the two young and just students. And Tsunade developed her cannons during her medical career, not in her youth as a prodigy. Truly, Chakra works wonders. Rolling up the second scroll, I eagerly began to read it and was not disappointed. Oh no, far from disappointed. This scroll described methods for strengthening the bones of the skeleton, enhancing various muscle groups, sharpening senses such as vision and smell, as well as effective methods for cleansing the body of accumulated harmful substances. All of this is hardly possible to perform on oneself, but in this case, there are clones. Very useful knowledge, indeed. True, for now, I'll only be able to focus on bones, but even that is already a huge plus to my Kekiai Genkai. I wonder why Tsunade was so generous with such a gift? Of course, all this can definitely be found in the hospital library, but I bet it would take more than a day and hardly in as much detail and with instructions on the step-by-step -step processes of a medic's work. Damn, it's a pity Ma is starting her service in a couple of weeks, otherwise, I could have implemented improvements for her as soon as I mastered them well enough on myself. However, it's worth digging through dad's scrolls, as well as those I brought from Yuzushiogakure, for suitable seals. As far as I know, she only has seals for weapons on her wrists and protection from illusions among her non-training ones, fortunately, the strings of symbols on her temples are made of a special ink that absorbs into the skin and fades after a while. Rolling up the scroll and putting it in the pocket of my pants, I headed towards the exit of the hospital, I didn't have a shift today, so I just came to get a new license. Hey, Ryukuen. Looking around, I noticed Tsunade waving from the street on the right. I wondered what she wanted. After waiting for her to come closer, I smiled and bowed. Good day and thank you for the gift. No need for thanks, Tsunade waved dismissively, still smiling warmly. These techniques aren't so rare that you couldn't find them in the library. I just took the trouble to compile them into one scroll. At least it's a serious time saver, I shrugged. But let's leave that topic. Tsunade, why did you need me? Stop with the Tsama, the blonde grimaced. I get my share of respect without you, especially since I don't hear any real respect from you. Then just Tsunade? Or Psan? I suggested, grinning. Just Tsunade is fine. Alright, Tsunade, so why did you need me? I tilted my head slightly. A characteristic twitch of the hands of the busty medic showed me that she wasn't immune to my childish charm either, the vast majority of women in the hospital would already be hugging me just seeing such a surprised expression. Yeah, excellent self-control, as expected from the princess of the clan. I'll have to practice various expressions at home, it's a great way to manipulate adults, as I discovered, becoming a child. I was looking for you to give you an invitation, the blonde announced, folding her arms across her chest. From whom? Such news threw me off a bit, we're not close enough to visit each other, and we don't seem to have any other mutual acquaintances. From Lin Li Chan, she heard about your promotion from me and decided to invite you over, explained Tsunade. Seems you promised her something before, but there was never a reason, and now you can celebrate your new rank and also meet Kushina Chan, who's visiting us. Oh! Kushina is already in Kanoha? And I had no idea. I would have missed it if the princess hadn't mentioned her. Hmm, if she's here, then Minato should be enrolling in the Ninja Academy soon. If I remember the timeline correctly, a lot of people should be appearing soon from key figures, among them, Mikoto, who should be the same age as Kushina, this year already saw the birth of Asuma, if rumors are to be believed, as well as Marino Ibiki, Yuhi Kurinai, and Shizun. Inazuka Tsum should already be training as a Kunoichi, and I should end up in her class in the last year. However, that can wait. The legitimate way to meet Naruto's presumed mother and the future, or already present, Jinchuriki of the Nine-Tailed Fox is worth it, and such an opportunity shouldn't be missed. Just don't forget about secrecy. Kushina? Who's that? Kushina Uzumaki, a distant relative of Midobie San, who's come to live in Kanoha. Right now, she's staying with the Senju. I see. What day is the invitation for? I asked. On Sunday, 6 in the evening, and don't forget to bring SAE San with you. Hmm, for days from now. Alright, does Kachan know where your district is, or does Linchan live separately from the clan? Many clan shinobi buy separate houses as soon as they start earning enough money. She's in the clan, so you'll find your way there, Tsunade nodded. Just tell the gate guards the purpose of your visit, and they'll escort you to her. Okay. Will you be there too? Maybe, if no new mission comes up, I'll come, the blonde nodded. But I need to hurry now, so see you soon. See you soon. 
Waving goodbye, I watched the departing girl until the hospital doors and then resumed my way home. How could I forget about the promise and about the beauty of Senju? But I'm looking forward to seeing her. And SAE deserves a break, she's been training almost non-stop, so I often have to apply healing skills in practice to fix overly damaged muscles. However, there's still time until the weekend, so Kushina can be forgotten for now. What's much more important is the injection of poison I'm supposed to get today, the eighth one. It'll make me dizzy and nauseous again, but what can't you do for your own survival and undeniable benefit? I learned about the resistance training course to various poisons from Ikamaru sensei and after a short war of arguments with SAE, who eventually yielded to the ironclad reasoning, I decided to undergo it before entering the academy. I don't know where she got a hundred injections with different poisons, but for two months now, I've been undergoing a course designed for the strongest ANBU. Considering my healing Kekiai Genkai, the effects disappear relatively quickly, so enduring the first terrible couple of hours is enough for the blood to produce enough antidote to breathe a sigh of relief. You can't achieve absolute immunity to all toxins with this method, of course, but slowing down or weakening the effect is a very nice bonus for any shinobi. Especially when combined with regeneration. Sorting through the accumulated pile of documents, Tsunade puzzled over the strangeness of the task assigned to her by her relative. While Lin Li may have invited Ryu over, her own home would have been just as suitable, rather than the Senju estate. Besides, he wasn't such a significant figure yet, despite all his achievements, to warrant the attention of figures like the wife of the first Hokage. Or perhaps it was Mito B.A. Chan's desire to finally meet her relative and bring the young Uzumakis together. Then why invite Eseinara as well? With a sigh, Tsunade dismissed the meddling old lady from her mind and immersed herself in her work. Hokage-sama, a report from observers in the Land of Lightning, an ANBU member appeared in the Hokage's office, bowing as he handed a scroll to the third Hokage sitting behind the desk. Taking it, Hiruzen Sarutobi unfurled the message and began reading it, paying no attention to the ninja who disappeared with a small puff of smoke. However, he didn't have much time to dwell on it. The door swung open, and Shimura Danzo entered the office with determined steps. Hiruzen, Kumo and Kiri have mobilized their forces. Kiri too? Hokage sighed, finishing reading the scroll and setting it aside. It was to be expected that they would try to negotiate between themselves for a truly lucrative prize. What are our actions? The Hokage gestured for his guards to leave the room and indicated a chair for his longtime rival. Danzo, take three quarters of your men and personally monitor the attack on Yuzushio. They're almost certainly going to attack the island from our coastline. Just observation or? Danzo immediately clarified. Just observation, Sarutobi ordered calmly. If the Uzumakis fall, you only engage in battle when you're absolutely certain of victory. Suppose the redheads win, but they're severely weakened, what then? Shimura raised an eyebrow in question. As soon as they let their guard down, attack, the Hokage replied coldly, stuffing and lighting his pipe. We don't need such a former ally nearby, and their wealth and knowledge will be useful in the war that has begun. Besides, the Senju will behave more subdued without outside support. Another possibility is that Yuzushio repels the attack, Shimura chuckled. With their relatively small numbers, those red bastards are extremely strong, powerful, and cunning, so they might have prepared something just for such a case. Then finish off the survivors, regardless of losses. They must not reach their villages. It will be done, Hokage-sama. The head of the ANBU route shifted to a formal tone. And Danzo, Hiruzen's voice stopped him at the threshold of the office, take Orochimaru with you. He seemed very interested in the redhead's library, so let him try to gain new knowledge if there's a chance. And send word to our patrols and border posts to withdraw inland for a week and a half, we don't need unnecessary casualties. Yes, Hokage-sama. Looking at the closed door and feeling the presence of the guards taking their positions, Hiruzen Sarutobi took a deep drag from his pipe and exhaled a puff of smoke, covering his eyes. The traditional headgear of the leader slid slightly down, concealing his face, now somewhat sunken with more pronounced wrinkles. Another war, the Hokage whispered quietly. And how many will perish this time? Having lost both parents in the First World War, as well as his teachers, recently becoming a father for the second time, Kami no Shinobi allowed himself a moment of weakness, bitterly contemplating whom he might have to bury this time. Despite his ruthlessness towards enemies, political allies who hindered him, or allies who stumbled in his path, the third Hokage tried to protect his loved ones, even if sometimes at the expense of his work, unlike Danzo, capable of killing his own mother if it would benefit the glory of Kanoha. And during war, when leaders and their families are targeted first, this becomes particularly difficult. 
So, most of you have now finally mastered the skills of using shadows from the surrounding environment, proclaimed the elderly Nara, with nearly completely gray hair and two ugly scars crossing the right side of his face horizontally, miraculously avoiding his eye. So, in the next session, we will try to divide your attention among several targets instead of just one, as it was before. Those of you who did not achieve satisfactory results today will have to practice at home and demonstrate your progress later. Such a statement was met with prolonged groans from several of the laziest eight-year-olds present in the spacious hall dedicated specifically to training in clan Haidenjutsu, artificial lighting created a large number of shadows, facilitating manipulation for the children. No groaning. Take an example from Ryu, he works from morning till night, frowned the teacher. We won't have such stamina even after death, snorted Inzu, near me. After death, you won't care anymore, I snorted back, stretching my legs after the uncomfortable sitting, I hated Japanese traditions that involved no chairs. You'd better try to listen to sensei's advice instead of trying to nap unnoticed by others. Pfft, who's to say you weren't just left at the Nara clan doorstep as a baby, since you're not at all like the Naras. Yeah, like I could be offended by that nonsense. Idiot. Shut up and listen to sensei. Maya, sitting on the other side, smacked the little one on the head, throwing a guilty glance at me. Yeah, it's probably genetic, all Nara females are active and tend to resort to physical violence, and their partners are smart but very lazy and passive. And this applies even to women who came into the clan from the outside. As you can see from my uncle, that's exactly who all the slackers choose for wives. No wonder all the men in our clan are considered henpecked. By the way, almost three times as many boys are born in the clan as girls. We only had three girls out of eight. Cough, thanks Maya-chan, nodded the teacher. So, as I mentioned, at the next session, I will assess all those lagging behind, and we will try to catch several opponents in Kage Main no Jutsu. That's all, you are free to go. A dozen lively children aged seven to eight simultaneously bowed and disappeared from the hall within a couple of seconds. Except for me. Firstly, I still had a couple of questions, and secondly, although I was fairly familiar with the kids, I hadn't really made any friends, because I couldn't chat about stupid topics, and there wasn't really time for anything more. So Ryu, did you want something? Asked the teacher when he noticed that I wasn't rushing to leave with everyone else. I wanted to know if it's possible to achieve such good control over clan hide and jutsu that it wouldn't require using seals? Ever since I learned about the techniques of pineapple head shinobi, one question has plagued me, couldn't you just train extra control and manipulate your shadow without all these silly stops and seal formations, when a stationary shinobi becomes an excellent target? After all, it's enough to impose hand-to-hand -hand combat and the enemy is caught. Considering Nara's weakness in taijutsu, most people familiar with the abilities of shadow users would try to do just that, walking straight into the trap. Theoretically, it's quite possible, but it will require a huge amount of time to gain the necessary level of control over your shadow, the veteran replied, time that you could spend on something more useful. I see. Does anyone in the clan know how to do this? As far as I know, no one. Hmm, thank you for the information, sensei, I respectfully bowed and left the training hall, heading towards home. Well, who would spend days training if you could achieve the desired result simply by combining the concentration seal? However, the clan had been doing just fine for hundreds of years, so why should anything change now? Unfortunately, I had to attend Hidzatsu classes personally for the simple reason that clones were useless in this case. Hidzatsu used a component of chakra, while shadow clones already had mixed chakra without a source, which couldn't be separated, making it impossible to use shadows for them. So I had to train solely by myself in the usual way. Of course, progress was somewhat slowed down by this, but still, I was one of the best in the group. Overall, I had big plans for these techniques, as well as for Fuinjutsu. After all, if a captured enemy repeats your movements, what prevents finding a way to force them to move with the power of shadows independently of your movements? I think it all depends on the amount of chakra and the degree of control over the used shadow. And there's already a fitting name for it, shadow puppetry. Or teleporting from shadow to shadow, isn't that a variant of Shunshin? And the speed of shadow movement should be much faster than what our instructor demonstrates. Of course, I understand that all Nara are used to outsmarting and catching opponents through tactical moves, but against truly fast opponents alone, such a method may not help. Anyway, all of this can wait, I decided to experiment with various clan jutsu only after reaching my teens. By that time, I'll have a more massive reserve, decent medical experience, and well-developed chakra channels capable of withstanding the use of costly techniques without much effort. By the way, this is precisely why powerful elemental ninjutsu can only be learned by an ordinary shinobi after achieving the rank of chunin. 
Of course, this doesn't apply to most clan and hereditary shinobi, but the fact that they didn't give us anything truly expensive after all the training speaks for itself. And the academy dedicates the first years of study to the physical and mental development of students, along with acquiring a good control of chakra, and only in the last two years do they learn weak techniques. First, the basic three, and in the final year, training in transforming chakra into elemental. I was particularly interested in the subjects taught to Academy Shinobi and the order of their presentation. After all, caution never hurt anyone. Even though I'm an Uzumaki with special chakra, it's definitely not worth the risk. So all that's left is manipulating ordinary chakra, like creating a raisin gan or using techniques that don't require transformation. Chidori can wait a couple more years. Ma, I'm home. Arriving home, I announce my presence to Saya from the doorway. Come in, lunch will be ready soon, came from the kitchen. I'll be right there. Taking off my shoes, I quickly changed into my training outfit, consisting of shorts and a tank top, due to the unusually warm weather for the beginning of winter, and hurried to have lunch. In the kitchen, one ma was cooking something on the stove, while the other was chopping salad nearby. Pulling out a stool for myself, I sat down at the table and rested my elbows on it, supporting my head with my hands. Um, Saya, who had turned from the stove, looked at me questioningly. Nothing, I'm just thinking how nice it is to have so many moms, I explained my smile. We're also glad that there's such a useful jutsu as Kage Bunshin, the clones chimed in together, and after exchanging glances, they laughed. Darn, who would have doubted it? By the way, during the time mom has been using them, her chakra volume has greatly increased, practically by one and a half times, and now she's at the level of a decent jonin. Considering the increased control with learning Raisingan, clan techniques will be more effective in application as well. Accordingly, the chances of survival in a confrontation have significantly increased. I think by the time she returns to duty, Saya will be at the same speed level. Considering that I found a couple of quite useful and interesting seals in the scrolls that she can use, I have no doubt about the outcome in a battle against an ordinary jonin level shinobi. Though, these seals don't really work for me yet, leading to deformation and destruction of the test sub, ah, uh, clone, but with the remaining time, I'll gain enough experience to apply such complex matrices without the slightest error. By the way, I mostly study fuenjutsu with the help of clones, much safer for health. The count of explosions from incorrectly applied seals has already reached 700. And that's just explosions, not counting the failed attempts. It's no wonder that the study of such a complex ninja art is practically not conducted without an experienced instructor. I think it's because of such risks that they invented Uzumaki Kagebunshin, and all the other advantages came along with it. Lunch is served, a plate of fried rice and pieces of meat topped with vegetable salad was placed in front of me, distracting me from my thoughts. What about you? I asked, scanning the table and noticing there wasn't a second plate. I'll call her now, the clone smiled and dispersed, while the other began serving a portion for SAE. And a couple of minutes later, the door slammed shut and she appeared, in a sweat-soaked tank top and loose, movement-friendly pants, part of the Umbu uniform. Gliding over her figure, I instinctively noted the absence of a bra under the tank top, as well as the absence of bandages, popular among half of the kunoichi. But the main attention was drawn to the bloody knuckles, clearly indicating the intensity of training. Probably, I'll have to change the training dummies again. Which time already within the past three months. Still good, the seals on them are restored by the wood, if at least half remains intact. Hands. I demanded sternly and quickly, using the small first aid kit I always carried with me, cleansed the wounds and swiftly healed them, leaving no scars on the smooth skin. Thank you, Ryukuen, Ma sighed with relief and stretched upward with pleasure, cracking her joints. I immediately buried my nose in the plate and shoved the thoughts that involuntarily emerged from such a sight into the farthest corner of my mind. The wet tank top, clinging to the skin, left no room for imagination. Darn, the next three years until I get my Hitai 8 will be very difficult, considering the awakening interest in the opposite sex. Well, I found a suitable establishment with red lanterns during one of the inspections of Kanoha, so if I continue to grow like this, in a couple of years, I can just crash there, relieve the tension. Of course, under a henge, otherwise Saya and her sister will cut off everything they can if they find out. Although, it's definitely worth it. Remembering Tsunade, I involuntarily started comparing her wealth with what I had seen earlier with Lin Li and SAE. Stop. With a considerable effort of will, I threw such thoughts out of my head and focused on picking at the rice with chopsticks. Urgently increase the workload. Then no extra thoughts will intrude. A quick poke at the bottom revealed that the plate in front of me was pristine, without a single grain left, and a pleasant heaviness rested in my stomach. Phew, thanks. 
I sighed in relief, pushing away from the table and looking up at Ma. How's the training going? Good, with the help of seals and intensified exercises, my speed has greatly increased, and I can create Raisingan in a couple of seconds, Saya proudly replied, tearing herself away from her almost empty plate. Now I'm almost as fast as Setsura, and every three sparring matches out of ten end in my victory. Wow, quite a progress, Aunt Setsura is quite capable of competing even with the strongest Akamichi in close combat and is a recognized leader in Taijutsu among the Nara. I felt the weight of her blows and the skill in Shadow Dance firsthand. That's the official style of Taijutsu among the Nara, although the overwhelming majority of the clan stops at an improved version of the academic style. Lazy bunch, darn. Good progress. I nodded approvingly. Thank you. But without you, I wouldn't have grown in strength at such a speed, Saya smiled. Well, the presence and help of a qualified Irionin in such situations always helps, and considering that we were taught to perform restorative massage in the introductory course, even after the most intense training, I healed the injuries I received, then conducted a massage session with healing chakra, thoroughly stretching every muscle, removing lactic acid buildup, and supplying the necessary nutrients for recovery from the body's reserves. As a result, nothing hurt the next day, allowing me to resume intense training. True, the downside was increased appetite, but considering the amount of food I consumed, mom only caught up with me in volume. It's enough to say that our plates could hold at least two regular portions, and with a normal mound, all three. Oh come on, if Aji-san were in your place, he'd only dream of such a result. I objected. You're right about that, Ma giggled, this lazy one even prefers to spend time in bed w. Oops. Realizing she had let slip, Saya suddenly blushed and covered her mouth with her hand. And I myself barely restrained a laugh with a colossal effort of will when I realized what she meant. Though, I didn't really restrain it. Poor Setsura Abakan, I laughed, did she complain to you? Seeing the confirming nod, I slowly broke into a bloodthirsty grin. Materials for blackmail. I exclaimed in delight, jumping to my feet. Now this lazybones is in my pocket. Just don't say you heard it from me, Ma smirked, gradually regaining her natural complexion. Like a grave. I promised. Alright, let's eat, now it's time to stretch. How about you, will you rest first and then continue? After tea, Saya nodded, and you should do the same. Maybe, but I want to test a couple of ideas first, I waved off the suggestion. Leaving the house, I headed towards the training ground behind it. Grimacing at the sensations caused by passing through the barrier set up by Pa to conceal what was happening inside from prying eyes, I noticed Focus Clone sitting on the ground in one of the corners of the rectangle. One was meditating, while the other was playing with creating Raisingan, or rather, variations of it. How's it going? I asked, approaching closer. So far, boss, small Raisingan is easy to create, as is slightly larger, but we're still far from Odom's Raisingan, not for another couple of years at least, sighed my clone, the chakra channels can't handle the load, and they're not yet designed to transfer such volumes even in the hands, despite all our training. Hmm, a problem. Well, I won't need such jutsu power for now, so okay. Alright, forget about Odom for now, what about the possibility of throwing it? A small chakra bomb we could use in any case would be useful. Plagiarism is plagiarism, but we need to create our own as well. When attempting to throw it, the technique simply dissipates due to loss of control and chakra supply, shrugged the clone, I doubt anything can be done about it here. Okay, for now, train to create mini Raisingans on your fingers, and I'll think about it. Yes, boss. Sitting down on the ground nearby, I began to analyze the technique and possible ways to improve it, at least for use at medium distances. Naruto threw his Raisin Shuriken using Sage Mode, but even that method doesn't apply to regular techniques. It's better to go in reverse and figure out what happens when it's thrown. Firstly, control is lost, and then destruction occurs, so it's necessary to maintain control. Secondly, the support for maintenance is lost, so contact with the chakra gateways through Tenketsu must be maintained. How to do it? The most obvious way is not to let it out of your hands. But it doesn't fit. Next, what can I apply from what I know? After half an hour of pondering, during which Ma returned to the training ground, I finally found something suitable in my memory. The chakra no Ido of the puppeteers. The thread extends beyond the system but doesn't lose the ability to transmit chakra, while remaining sufficiently strong. Considering the increased density and strength of my chakra, the result will be much better than that of Suna's puppeteers. I wonder if it will be possible to control the direction of the throw? Okay, I have an idea. Let's use chakra threads to attach to the Raisingan and only then throw it, allowing it to elongate. Do you think it will work, boss? 
We don't know how to make them, the clone doubted, dispersing three small spheres on the fingers of his right hand. We just try to release the chakra and attempt to give it a shape instead of rotating it, that's all, I waved off, full of enthusiasm, then we'll just start with a small raisin gan, because it's easier to control and fuel it. Meanwhile, try to create a thread. I detached myself from the surrounding world and focused on the tip of the index finger of my right hand, which I extended forward. Chakra obediently flowed through it and began to dissipate into a barely noticeable bluish haze. Excellent. Now, try to concentrate it into the shape of a thread. Gradually, a column of chakra formed at the tip of the finger, but it looked nothing like a thread. Darn, what am I doing wrong? Boss. Look. Distracted, I glanced at the clone and barely kept my mouth from falling open, a dark blue glowing thread stretched between the two index fingers of my copy. How did you do that? Watch. The clone got rid of the thread and, bringing his index fingers together, sharply spread them apart, stretching the thread between the chakra nodes. Come on. Bringing my own fingers together, I tried to create it myself. And I succeeded. Boss, it's like sticking to a surface, just focus more on maintaining contact with the chosen point, the clone noted, this time extending the thread from the ground. Hmm, indeed, I agreed with him, testing the thread on a small stone, which ended up suspended in the air. Instead of breaking the contact, I swung and launched the weight away, allowing the threads to elongate. The experiment can be considered successful. Boss, we can throw Raisingan in the same way. Exactly. But first, we need to learn to control the movement of the chakra thread and maintain control through it. So that's what we'll do. For the next two hours, the clone and I conducted experiments on various actions with chakra no ito. Stretching, attracting, transferring chakra between each other, tearing, and even binding when thickening to an ordinary rope. We never quite understood how puppeteers controlled their creations through it, but otherwise, the experiments were successful. Boss, shall we start with Raisingan? Yeah, just be careful and don't blow yourself up, because I really don't feel like spending a lot of time dissecting memories and getting a headache right now. Creating a rotating sphere of chakra on my finger, I carefully brought the finger of my other hand closer and attempted to attach the chakra no ito to the outer layer of the prepared technique. Naturally, I didn't succeed the first time, but around the 20th attempt, the thread stuck, or rather, absorbed, into the outer layer of the rotating mass, and I felt the flow of chakra through it. Trying to lift it up, I failed, the technique deflated. Well, never mind, not everything happens at once, the beginning is made, and then perseverance and practice will do everything. Whether it takes a month, two, a year, or more, I will get closer to the ultimate goal, the ability to throw an improved Raisingan without sage mode. Kachan, it's time for us to go out. I shouted from my room, adjusting the luxurious silk kimono I'd brought from Yuzushio one last time. We had decided that if we were going to Senju's house, we should look our best, especially since we were related to the ruling family of the clan. It's a good idea to look your best, even if it's just for a friendly visit. So the kimono, simple in appearance, but if you look closely, it was very high quality and expensive, first of all, because of the material used, was just right. Uzumaki's clan symbol on one shoulder and Nara's on the other completed the picture. Well, the fact that the dark red clothes with a string of dark blue stylized symbols suited my hair and eyes was an added bonus. By the way, I didn't put my hair in a ponytail or braid it, so it fell down to the middle of my back in a free waterfall. And throwing only one look in the mirror in full parade, I realized that in 5-6 years women will be stacked under their feet literally, because even now a little childish face literally screamed, breed. And it would only get stronger with age. In general, before I had no desire or opportunity to consider myself in such a way, except in the morning, when my eyes were not yet dilated or in the evening, when the long daytime training took its toll, respectively, and the view was not very good, besides, I got used to my face. That's why he didn't pay much attention to the looks of surrounding women, considering it as a manifestation of maternal instinct at the sight of a cute child. Now it was clear to me that in the future I would be quite handsome, of course, if I didn't manage to get scars. But the bomb on my ego from this realization spilled a lot of bomb. It's nice to have handsome parents. But that's okay, but I don't need too much attention to my person. Maybe I should start wearing a mask like Kakashi. I'd look cool. It's the easiest way out at least. And it'll be harder to recognize my face outside the village. I'll start wearing it when I go to the academy. Hopefully, I'll avoid Sasuke's fate and the attention of the horde of groupies will pass over my humble persona, enough of them will be attracted by my talents. Ryokuen, I'm ready. Ma looked into my room. She was wearing a luxurious dark blue silk kimono with a black sash that was tightly fitted and emphasized her figure, shimmering beautifully in the light. 
Her dark hair was gathered into a loose ponytail that fell down her shoulder to her chest, and from beneath the fabric could be seen a pair of dainty light-colored barefoot shoes. Considering the presence of light, almost imperceptible makeup, which was more a tribute to tradition than an opportunity for beauty, along with the outfit, the sight was stunning. It was clear what Ryota had fallen for, the admiration was endless. Considering the fact that Saya was only 25 now, the men around her would be drooling for the next decade and a half if she wore an outfit like that every day. However, my life will also become more difficult to keep the bastards away, Ryo. Don't sleep. Huh? Yes, I'm ready, woke up from his stupor, nodded and together with his mother closed the house and put additional barriers for the time of absence, went to visit. All the clan properties were located in about the same part of Kanoha, so we didn't have to go very far. Although I was mostly exploring the village center and its surroundings, I didn't have to go near Senju's properties, unlike Saya. Even so, the 20-minute leisurely walk under my arm felt like ours for two simple reasons. The first was that almost every passerby who noticed us was obliged to stare at us. And if the curious attention to my person I still tolerated, but the glances thrown at Saya made her grind her teeth in rage and suppress the desire to gouge out the eyes of the bastards. Which brings us to the second reason, kimonos are commonly worn on the naked body. Of course, you can disregard it, but that would be considered indecent. Now add to that the natural beauty, the fact that constant training works wonders for the figure, and we get drooling male city dwellers. Shinobi are much more reserved in this regard, but it didn't save them from interested stares. Of course, it was less pronounced for me, because at eight and a half I was a little short of my mother's shoulder, but for some people this fact was no barrier. Damn pedophiles! So, until we found ourselves in front of the gates guarded by the Senju, I repelled all the lustful bastards with a considerable wave of chakra, much to Sai's huge surprise, who seemed to enjoy the effect and apparently took great pleasure in my reaction. Damn women. Good evening, Senju-san, my mom bowed in greeting, followed by me. Welcome, the senior Chunin replied. Saya and Ryunara, I presume? Yes. You are expected, my partner will escort you, the guard bowed again. Passing through the open gates, I chuckled in surprise, quick, easy, and no arrogance. It seems the Senju really don't stick their noses up in the air in general, not just with certain encountered individuals. Following our guide, I looked around with curiosity. In principle, the territory of the founders didn't differ much from ours, a huge piece of land, with the palace in the center where the ruling family and the head with relatives reside, and around it are the houses of other clan members who prefer to live among their own. Naturally, considering who their leaders were, the entire area looked like a huge park with hidden buildings and picturesque ponds connected by a common system of canals. They say the brothers created all this beauty literally in a matter of days, using their abilities. Given their would release, I have no slightest desire to doubt it. By the way, except for the building in the center, all the structures turned out to be single-story, just like ours. It seems all clans are grounded, and the upper floors are a way to show the significance of the people living there. Otherwise, the Hokage Tower wouldn't be the tallest building in Kanoha. Of course, this only applied to traditional buildings, as ordinary people built themselves multi-story houses, and the same went for hotels, apartments, the academy, hospital, and other such structures. There was a clear merging of old and modern architectural styles. I wonder, did this trend start after the construction of the leaf, or was it Hashirama's intention? Anyway, I got a bit distracted. The guide led us to a small neat single-story house, strikingly similar to our own, at least they had the same architect. And as soon as we approached within a dozen steps, the front door slid open and leanly appeared on the threshold. Ryukuen. With such a cry, the long-time acquaintance disappeared from view, turning into a blurry silhouette, and I found myself in bone-crushing embraces, squeezing out almost all the air from my lungs. Hey! I weakly protested, trying to free myself. Of course, it's nice to be pressed into such a chest, but my health is somehow more precious to me. Aren't you glad to see me, Ryu Kuen? The redhead exclaimed dramatically, barely releasing me. Of course I am, just without bone crushing, please. I chuckled. Hi, Linchan. Long time no see. Hi, Ryu Kuen, Saya Chan, leanly smiled, gesturing for us to come inside, how's life treating you? Training, training, and more training for both of us, mom smiled following the hostess into the house after taking off her shoes. But you're not on duty, unlike your son? Lili raised her eyebrows in surprise. I'm planning to return, so I have to get back in shape, Saya shrugged, and Ryu doesn't know the meaning of the word rest, working practically from morning till night with hardly any days off. Actually, I meditate for two hours before bed, I defended myself. 
Actually, I meant normal rest, not its substitute, mom threw me a reproachful look, mocking. To which I just snorted but didn't say anything, catching a mocking smile from the redhead out of the corner of my eye. She led us into the living room, where a small table was already set for five people, but judging by the amount of various food and sweets, it would be enough for ten people. Li Li Chan, will anyone else come besides Kushina? I asked, noting the extra plate. Yes, Mito-sama also wants to meet you, after all, relatives, the Kunoichi smiled, inviting us inside, they should be coming now. And as if on cue, a doorbell rang from the entrance, and the hostess rushed to open the door. Ryu. Turning to the unexpectedly serious SAE, I raised an inquisitive eyebrow. In the presence of Mito-sama, behave respectfully and courteously, don't forget your table manners, and don't devour everything in reach, Ma warned. I don't want her to think my son isn't worthy of the Uzumaki blood. Don't worry, I'll behave perfectly, I reassured her with a nod. Barely had we fallen silent when the corridor echoed with the light sounds of frequent footsteps. Singular, I must note, there was no trace of the stride of two kunoichi. My assumptions were confirmed when a trio entered the living room. Naturally, even though I had never met two Uzumakis before, recognizing them was easy. The tall elderly woman who entered, with the exact same hairstyle as the one shown by the elderly wife of the Hokage and in the manga, was dressed in a simple grey and white kimono, and equally inconspicuous sandals over white socks. Her dry and slender yet still graceful figure literally exuded an aura of strength and authority. Only the kind look of her bright green eyes, very similar in color to size or mine, somewhat softened her presence. And behind her, holding her hand, a shy figure in a red kimono, almost half my size, hid behind her back, matching her hair. Mito-sama, it's nice to see you again, Ma stepped forward, bowing. Pleased to meet you, Mito-sama, my name is Ryu, I followed suit, bowing as well. No need to be so formal, Saya-chan, we are family after all, the Jinchuriki smiled, nodding in return. Nice to meet you, Ryukin. I've heard quite a bit lately about the emerging talents, including yours, and I'm glad to know that the Uzumaki blood is strong in your case. Thank you, Mito-sama, I bowed again. Honestly, the presence of such a personality nearby was slightly nerve-wracking, especially knowing the true power of this old lady and her ability to sense evil in people. Naturally, I don't consider myself as such, but who can predict her reaction? Oh, no, Sama, just call me Mito B.A.-chan or simply B.A.-chan, the ancient Uzumaki chuckled. Okay, B.A.-chan. I responded immediately, catching the familiar sparkle of joy in her eyes. Mom and Lin Li made a strange sound from afar and almost stumbled in surprise. And Mito-sama, shocked Senju exclaimed, stuttering. Oh ho ho, why such faces, the Uzumaki princess laughed, covering her mouth with the back of her hand. From the sound of that laughter and the sight before me, a wave of cold shivers ran down my spine for some reason. Man, when she laughs like that, the image of Nagi from Rubak involuntarily comes to mind. Ugh. And all those wrinkles on her face somehow smooth out, almost restoring the stolen beauty of youth to the kunoichi, and it doesn't seem like she's that old anymore. Ah, I would love to see her in her youth, if even with remnants of her former appearance, she still makes an impression. As I was contemplating the laughing woman, another sound distracted me, the tinkling laughter behind Mito. While everyone was distracted, Kushina moved away a little from her elder relative and was now giggling into her palm. But seeing that all the attention of those present was on her, she squeaked and shyly hit again, clinging to Mito's kimono and peeking at me and mom with one eye. Kushi-chan, stop being shy, grandma kindly scolded her. Introduce yourself to your distant relatives. A little hesitantly, the girl stepped forward and bowed. My name is Kushina Uzumaki, pleased to meet you. There you are, Kushina Uzumaki. Looking at the little girl, I was amazed at how much worse she was portrayed in the manga, before me stood a cute, shy child with huge blue eyes, whom I wanted to cuddle, pamper, and spoil in every way. Hi, I'm Ryu, I hope we'll be friends. I smiled at her, my warmest smile, and didn't even have to try. Kami, she's so cute. Ma exclaimed and rushed to hug and pinch Kushina's chubby cheeks. Nice to meet you. Well, what can I say, it's good that this time it wasn't me. Alright, now that everyone's gathered, let's sit at the table, Lin Li clapped her hands, drawing everyone's attention and slipping into the role of a hospitable hostess. There were no objections to such an offer, and we all eagerly headed to the table. Kushina was seated next to me on one side of the table, Senju found herself at the head of the table, while Ma and Mito sat across from each other. At the Uzumaki table, silence is not customary, so soon a meaningless conversation about various female things started, in which I did not participate because I was playing for the wrong team, and Kushina, due to her young age. 
So we mostly talked among ourselves, enjoying various delicacies that I put on both plates. Despite her small size, my new acquaintance had a decent appetite, like any clan member. It seemed that the plan was for me to take care of her without distracting the adults. However, I didn't mind much, despite her young age, Kushina had already started studying Fuenjutsu and had made good progress in a few months under Mido's patronage, so after giving a few sound pieces of advice and small tricks, I completely captured her attention. Besides seals, I talked about the Nara, greatly amusing them with descriptions of the sloths in the clan and the ways in which women preferred to deal with laziness in their significant others and offspring. Rolling pins and cast iron pans played a significant role in boosting enthusiasm. In general, after the initial embarrassment, a very lively girl emerged, not feeling very comfortable in an unfamiliar environment and missing home. But all good things must come to an end, and so did this evening, reminding me of the merry feasts in Yuzushiogakure. At least, I convinced myself that Mido was a true Uzumaki, despite her formidable reputation in the village. Around 10 o'clock, Kushina began to yawn, cutely rubbing her fists over her eyes in an attempt to ward off sleep. In the end, she ended up in my lap, burying her nose in my chest and sweetly snoring in the circle of my arms. She reminds me so much of my niece in her childhood. She also loved to sleep in my arms. And only after half an hour of quietly observing the women engrossed in conversation about women's things, they noticed sleeping Kushina in my arms. Oh ho! Looks like little Kushichan caught someone's fancy? Mito teased with a teasing tone, smiling broadly. Hm? You never showed a desire to interact with those much younger than you before, and here you've been chattering away for so long. Saya raised an eyebrow questioningly, but judging by the playful sparks in her eyes, I understood that she, too, decided to tease me. Well, they succeeded, slowly but surely, my cheeks began to burn from the rush of extra blood. St stop making up nonsense here. I protested. Era, maybe Kushina likes you? Leanly added her contribution. Before, she never fell asleep in anyone's arms. And all three of them quietly chuckled, watching my flushed face. Damn, women. It's not my fault she's so adorable. Ha, huh, the drowsy girl suddenly stirred and lifted her head, blinking her eyes open, bh on? There, they woke the child up. I shot an angry look at the kunoichi. It's time for you to sleep, Kushichan, and our guests need to head home, Mito smiled, so let go of Ryu's lap. I released her and helped the sleepy little one get down to the floor, holding her hand so she wouldn't accidentally fall. Mito-sama, I have spare rooms, so Kushina can stay here for the night, Senju suddenly suggested, and there's no need to go anywhere. Looking at the swaying little girl with half-closed eyes, Mito sighed. Alright, Kushichan will stay with you for the night. Great, I'll show where you can settle in, the hostess clapped her hands happily, Ryu, will you help tuck in Kushina-chan? Of course, I replied, throwing a quick questioning glance at Saya and receiving a confirming nod. Scooping up the surprised little girl, I hurried after Linli, casting a cautious glance back and noticing the serious expression on the elderly Uzumaki's face. Waiting until Senju and the children were far enough away not to hear those remaining in the living room, the elder turned to Nara. Mido-sama? Saya raised an eyebrow questioningly, silently asking about the reason for removing unnecessary ears. Here, take these, Uzumaki pulled a couple of scrolls from her wrist and tossed them to her. Without asking unnecessary questions, Nara unfolded one of the scrolls and gasped quietly. Mido-sama, this, why? I don't have much life left, at most, in half a year, there will be a ritual to pass on the fox, and Kushina will become the new Jinchuriki, Uzumaki explained quietly. After that, I won't last more than a couple of months. But why me? It's simple, your son will be able to handle it, simultaneously preventing outsiders from getting their hands on Uzumaki knowledge after my death. And what about Kushina? Saya shook her head. To take or steal from an unsuspecting child is easiest, Mito sighed, and given the tense relations between our villages, it's almost a done deal. Senju will watch over her, but even Tokachan won't be able to directly go against the Hokage and his cronies without good reason. So consider it payment for supervision. I think Ryukuen will agree to give Kushinachan a few lessons in Fuenjutsu, Undoubtedly, Mito-sama, Nara bowed. Thank you. Don't mention it, Mito waved her hand, but don't breathe a word of this to anyone, otherwise Danzo might start bothering you already. Of course. But what about? The Kunoichi glanced at the second scroll. This? This is a small insurance policy, but whether to use it or not is up to you. I, will think about it, Saya replied hesitantly, sealing both scrolls. But Ryu might figure it out. Let him, he impressed me as a thoughtful child. 
Just at that moment, quiet footsteps were heard, instantly cutting off the conversation. Kachan, can we go, the red-haired boy waved his hand, entering the living room and smiling slightly embarrassed. The giggling redhead following him was pointedly ignored. In response to the questioning looks of those present, she shook her head mockingly. Someone has already learned how to compliment girls. I just praised her hair, Ryu huffed and turned away, unsuccessfully trying to hide a slight blush. It's nothing, you'll have plenty of chances to meet again, the old Uzumaki smiled, I hope you'll take care of Kushina? Of course. You didn't even need to ask, the boy replied indignantly. Good then. Ryu, it's time for us to go, Nara reminded. Thank you for your hospitality, Ryu bowed. Don't be so formal, Ryu Kuen. Lin Li scolded him, seeing them off. Bye, Lin Chan, B.A. Chan, flashing a wide smile, he hugged both women and waved for a while as he walked away from the house. Well, I said the boy would become a heartbreaker very soon, Senju suddenly smirked. Yes, Ryu turned out to be an unusual child despite the diluted blood, Uzumaki agreed, watching the mother and son leave. Good night, Linchan, I'll check on Kushina tomorrow morning. All right, good night, Mito sama Stepping away from the house a few steps and hearing the click of the closing door, Mito Uzumaki raised her left hand and pulled a small piece of paper from her kimono sleeve, folded multiple times. Unfolding it, the kunoichi read a few lines despite the darkness, her eyes flashed red for a fraction of a second, and she began to smile. But not the kind of smile you give to acquaintances and friends, but the one that makes enemies break out in a cold sweat and dream of being as far away as possible. What an unusual child indeed, Mito murmured, smiling, and clenched the fist with the note, which ignited with flames, very unusual. The wind carried away the ash from her open palm, and the princess of the Uzumaki clan continued her way with a light, almost dancing step, leaving small red embers smoldering in the depths of her eyes, frightening the rare encountered Senju. All right, children, today we'll talk about an integral part of a shinobi's life, battles with their own kind, murmured Teruto Nara, still a fairly sturdy old man. Whether you like it or not, while carrying out missions, you'll inevitably face similar fighters, either trained by another village or renegades. Surveying each of the future shinobi in front of him with a keen eye, he nodded satisfactorily and, clasping his hands behind his back, resumed his movement around the classroom, limping slightly on his right leg. And before I begin, you should grasp one simple truth, there are no invincibles, only those who are hard to kill. So, learning a couple of techniques, don't rush to consider yourselves omnipotent. Likewise, don't underestimate your opponent. Even a genin can kill a kage if enough preparation is made and the latter is confident or relaxed enough. Even the Hokage? Even the Hokage can fall, as you can learn from the examples of the first two, Nara nodded, they were monstrously strong, yet they still perished. Do we have detailed records of these events? Because historical books don't really tell it accurately. Hmm, maybe in the restricted section of the library, but that's when you become a chunin, then you'll check. Anyway, we've deviated from the topic. There are several conditional types of shinobi, divided into subtypes. These are specialist fighters who choose and perfect one direction, like taijutsu or ninjutsu, dedicating very little time to others. The next type is jacks of all trades, capable of many things but not achieving particular mastery compared to the first. Engaging them in battle requires special caution. The third type is support shinobi, including medics, sensors, sealing masters, spies, and interrogation specialists. Of course, you'll rarely encounter the last two in the field, but that's not important. Although the latter shinobi I've listed prefer not to engage in combat, preferring to rely on the support of comrades more oriented towards battle, they shouldn't be disregarded. Taking a pause, the teacher let us digest what was said, then continued. Who can provide an example fitting this classification? The Uzumaki, renowned masters of sealing and kekiai genkai, nevertheless, are formidable fighters. Exactly, and most of them belong to the last type, shinobi who study several directions, compensating for existing weaknesses. Of course, this division is arbitrary, but most hidden villages adhere to this distinction in training their shinobi. That's why we will separately analyze their weaknesses. So, the first type, an obvious weakness, is focusing on one thing. Usually, these are enemies at the Genin-Chunin level, focused on gaining a greater advantage through their mastery in one thing. Typically, their other aspects are undeveloped and present a considerable opportunity for counteraction. Such shinobi were numerous even here until recently, with the improvement of the academy program, thanks to Senju, the situation began to improve. The system of forming teams exists precisely to eliminate each other's weaknesses, creating a combat-capable unit. 
So, the best solution is to deal with each one individually, using their existing weakness. Of course, only if you are confident in your superiority and not afraid to separate from your own comrades. The most obvious example of single-mindedness are the Hyuga and Akimichi. The second type, despite obvious shortcomings, represents both an easy opponent for some and an unpleasant one for everyone else. It's very, you know, unexpected to receive taijutsu in the face when you thought the enemy was a ranged fighter and decided to throw kunai from afar. Or they stand up after a direct hit, heal themselves, and jump back into the fight when you thought they were out of the game. Yeah, it happened. Such individuals within squads are the most unpredictable and should be dealt with quickly, otherwise, several unpleasant surprises are guaranteed. Senju and Uchiha with their eyes can be considered excellent examples. Again, these are shinobi at the Genenchunin level. The third type is encountered much less frequently and mostly consists of medics, whom you should eliminate first, or you risk knocking down some enemies several times if you fail to deliver a finishing blow. The best course of action is to attack them from a distance with techniques, as in Taijutsu, medics can incapacitate you with a couple of touches. I think you've all heard of Tsunade Senju, a typical example of a combat medic. I suspect she'll become even more dangerous in a few years, if she doesn't die sooner. What about the level of these opponents? From Genin to Jonin, and the latter are very difficult to kill, even if you swarm them with a crowd, resilient creatures they are, grimaced the old man. And the last type, it's practically all tokabetsu jonin and higher. Often possessors of kekiai genkai or special traits, like the huge chakra reserves and resilience of uzumaki and senju. They'll crush you into the ground, even if you're not particularly tired, so we'll talk about them separately and in the distant future when you're at least genin. And now, let's thoroughly analyze the strategies against the first two types, considering your curriculum and clan Haiden. The topic of today's lesson will be Jinjutsu, not such a common branch of shinobi arts, but you must know its basics and learn to defend against it, Tio Nara paused and surveyed her students. Who can say what the art of creating illusions relies on? On chakra control, the ability to subtly inject chakra into the opponent's system, and talent, simply put, imagination. Well done, Ryu, correct. There are various ways to affect the victims of Jinjutsu, but infiltrating your chakra into the enemy's chakra system is the main and most common. There are also illusions that affect specific areas or objects, but they are rare and at least be ranked Jutsu. By the way, Bunshin no Jutsu belongs to this category, as well as Henge, but due to their non-combat nature and simplicity, they are considered E-rank. The Kunoichi waited a moment, giving the students time to absorb the information. If you're caught in Jinjutsu, there are several ways to break free. The simplest but dangerous method is to injure yourself, and under the influence of pain, the illusion will dissipate. The next simplest is to momentarily halt the flow of your chakra, then the foreign chakra in your system will cease affecting your senses, and the Jinjutsu will fade. Another method is to use specially developed Jutsu for this purpose. I'll demonstrate it to you now. The teacher formed a seal and, with a quiet, Kai, released a barely perceptible pulse of chakra that swept through the room. This method will not only dispel fairly strong illusions from you but will also do the same for those around you, the range depends on the amount of chakra invested. And finally, the last method to dispel inflicted Jinjutsu is to transfer your chakra to another person, that is, to trust your partner. How do you detect that you've been caught in Jinjutsu? Learn to sense the intrusion of foreign chakra into your body or detect discrepancies in the environment perceived by all your senses, relying on your observational skills. It's all quite complex, but with a lot of practice, it's achievable, so that's what we'll be focusing on in today's lesson and all subsequent ones. And until everyone can dispel at least a C-rank technique from themselves. And will we be learning Jinjutsu ourselves? Only if you want to, after you learn to detect and dispel them. Alright, everyone's taken care of, I warmly smiled at the three-year-old girl, retracting my hands from her now healed arm. Don't fall again and watch where you're going, or you'll have to come back to me. Not gonna, the little one amusingly exclaimed, her huge eyes looking at the clean skin where there was recently an ugly wound from a sharp stone she tripped on. Say thank you to the sensei, her mother reminded her. Thank you very much, Narasama. Shpashiba. Don't mention it, feel free to reach out if needed, I waved goodbye to the pair and sighed tiredly as soon as the door closed behind them. Which shift is it today? The 12th or the 13th? I checked the logbook, the 17th. And it's not even midday yet. I hate these shifts. There's always a lot of visitors, and despite the simplicity of most cases, where it's hardly worse than a fracture, the constant flow of patients is quite exhausting. The main hospital is used not only by shinobi forces but also by ordinary civilians, although there are other departments for that. 
three to four rooms on the first floor are designated for this purpose, depending on the day of the week, where unfortunate trainees or newly licensed medics are stuffed, so to speak, to gain experience or just because they were unlucky. Although they pay a little more for such days, thanks to bonuses, no one rushes here, so it fell to me to be on duty today. Once again, I sighed heavily, took out a thermos from the desk drawer, and unscrewing the lid, poured hot tea into it. While there's no one here, I can take a little break. Despite my dissatisfaction, I didn't complain. Even though the work was exhausting, I desperately needed the practice, and the more, the better. Two years, one of which was spent on studying, is very little for a true medical ninja. Even the treaties I've memorized on special weather conditions won't make a difference because applying existing knowledge in practice lacks experience. However, that's not even the main reason. At the moment, I can restore damaged fibers, remove scars, grow bones, slightly densify them, and maintain the function of vital organs during surgery. Oh, and extract poison from the blood. That's it. That's the extent of my abilities. I still can't repair damaged chakra pathways or create them from scratch. The same goes for Tenketsu, even after learning the Hyuga Taijutsu, let alone something more complex. Working with the nervous system is still beyond me, although I know a bit about it. And let's not even mention the brain and spinal cord. With such injuries, only a handful of people can work in the hospital, among whom Tsunade has already slipped in. However, that's not the most important thing, over my time as a medical ninja, I've noticed a very interesting characteristic. Where even experienced medics would need about 5 minutes to heal a wound, I only need about 3 to 4. And it's not just about control, which I still don't have for complex surgeries, although lately, with the Raisin Gan and its variations, it has improved considerably, but rather about the greater potential of medical chakra. With completely identical parameters, muscle tissue simply regenerates faster. Given the density and strength of my chakra due to the Uzumaki Kekiai Genkai, I have reason to believe that such properties have been partially inherited through transformation. By the way, my chakra itself isn't light blue like that of ordinary shinobi, but blue. But in any case, the discovered property gives rise to some reflections. Unfortunately, the hospital's laboratories are currently inaccessible to me, only at the next promotion, so I have to carefully monitor all processes of use and think hard about where this property can be applied. It's clear that ninjutsu will be more powerful, but what about jinjutsu? So far, in our clan, we've only started studying the basics, ways of detection and dispersion, for which I had to disable protective seals. However, this can be tested later in the academy. But the memory of a certain bespectacled Uzumaki and her bites involuntarily comes to mind. Was this technique unique to her? Or does it apply to any Kekiai Genkai holder? There are very few medics in Yuzushio, so they might not have detected such a property, especially since who would think of allowing themselves to be bitten when wounded and transforming ordinary chakra into medical chakra in that area. But it's very similar to transferring our ability to regenerate to a wounded person through medical ninjutsu. After all, Orochimaru surely examined her as a possessor of unusual abilities from the deceased clan, he could have discovered something with his perverted but brilliant mind. But what's most interesting is that the Uzumaki Kekiai Genkai doesn't just heal damaged tissues, like any living organism, but faster, but instead, it regenerates cells. It's precisely because of this fact that longevity is achieved. Our chakra allows us to overcome the limit of cell divisions, thus slowing down and delaying aging. And in connection with this, I've had some thoughts that can only be tested in the hospital's laboratories. However, I could try to get permission from uncle to visit the clan laboratory. The main thing is to promise not to bother him for a couple of weeks. I think this slacker will agree. Yes, that's what I'll do. Hey, Ryu, how's it going? Raising my head, I recognized the medical ninja Ikamaru squeezing through the door. Good day, sensei, I greeted him, things are going well, at least for such a duty. How about you? Oh, don't even ask. Nara waved his hand and flashed his glasses. This year, out of a dozen candidates, only one girl made it to licensure, and the rest dropped out, not even lasting half a year. Well, that doesn't sound great. And this is at a time when we need new medical ninjas, even poorly trained ones. In a month, the main shinobi forces are heading to the front lines, along with half the hospital staff. What, can they send me too? I worried. Forget it, there won't be any war for at least another five years, at least. You don't have to worry about that, they're only taking those who have graduated from the academy and reached the third stage of medical ninja, so until you grow up, Ikamaru chuckled. Well, thanks for that. I wouldn't be so happy if I were you, with the reduction in staff, the workload on the remaining ones will increase several times, because they'll take the best ones. 
Damn it, we're already overwhelmed with work. Where else can it increase? Unfortunately, it's up to the Hokage's orders, Sensei shrugged. Okay, I've checked you, it's time for you to run, I still have a lot of work to do. Goodbye, Sensei. Phew, it's done, now all that's left is to check, I sighed with relief, putting aside the ink pot and brush. In front of me sat a clone, almost completely undressed, with a multitude of symbols flowing from the center of the palms to the shoulders and from the solar plexus across the chest, sides, abdomen, and back. This was the basis of two unearthed seals that I intended to give to SAE. Specifically, this was the 13th attempt after the first successful application. So far, only 3 out of 5 were working, but when this number reaches 5 out of 5, the last stage will come, testing on myself, and then, with final confidence, on mom. Kage Bunshin. I stepped back a few steps and prepared to observe the result of my work. What I like about this jutsu is its variability, you can use it differently. If you simply fold the seal and supply chakra, the existing reserves will be evenly divided among the total number of clones and yourself, but if you concentrate a strictly defined amount of chakra and only then use the jutsu, you can divide exactly that amount among the created clones, thus regulating the available reserve for each Kage Bunshin, without risking being almost empty at a critical moment. However, even with this method, it's necessary to spend a considerable amount of chakra for those who don't have Uzumaki reserves. You know what to do, I nodded to the created clone. Roger that, boss. He approached the symbol-covered clone and placed his fingers on the outstretched palms. Yifuin. With the infusion of chakra into the ink, the symbols filled with light and began to slide towards the palms, merging and forming black kanji. On the right palm, shuriken, and on the left, sunban. These seals were a complex modification of the seals used for storing items in ordinary scrolls. Only these were suitable for sealing strictly defined weapons. What kind, was obvious. But the main feature of them was in the unsealing. By applying a short impulse to the seal, the weapon was unsealed and flew out in the direction where the open palm was directed, a spinning shuriken or rotating sunban flying out at a tremendous speed. A very unpleasant surprise for the enemy. But that wasn't all. The seal included a, protection from fools, Besides the impulse, it was also necessary to have a clear desire to unseal the item in the seal, otherwise nothing would work. Thus, when using manual seals, the risk of false triggering was eliminated. All of this increased the overall complexity. And since it was necessary to draw the seal on the body, not on paper, there was a high chance of error, and therefore severed hands, as I found out from the example of experimental spears. It was also good that they immediately dispersed, without experiencing pain and without transmitting it along with memories. Let's focus on the main one. Yifuin. The clone placed both hands in the center of the inactive seal and infused all of his chakra into it, after which he dispersed. And I was already observing the familiar sight of the seal appearing. Except this time it was the kanji 4 of life, surrounded by three circles of symbols around it. It looks like everything worked here too, the test subject happily reported, now it's just a matter of testing its functionality. He placed his palms with the activated Cho Senjutsu and waited until the seal absorbed enough medical chakra for the initial activation, then sent the impulse. The kanji instantly pulsed, and the three circles of symbols spread throughout the body, softly glowing green. If there were a wound, they would gather around the damaged flesh and begin regeneration. Superficial wounds should disappear literally in seconds. By the way, it's very similar to Kabuto's technique, but executed with few Jutsu. An excellent seal with an integrated diagnostic part, triggered both upon receiving critical damage and by command. However, it has two drawbacks, single-use activation, after the chakra is depleted, the seal must be applied again, and medical chakra must be sealed again, and overall complexity in creation. Even though I'm no longer a novice in Fuenjutsu, after five years of daily study and practice, I still had significant difficulties in applying it correctly. But the main advantage of such dormant seals is the absence of chakra emission until the moment of activation, unlike constantly active ones, so even the best sensor wouldn't be able to detect them, unlike most Kekiai Gen Kai. However, even the seals I planned to apply to Ma's clothes weren't particularly demanding and required relatively little chakra to maintain, especially for me, but they turned flimsy fabrics and vests into armor comparable to good leather armor, which samurai used to prefer for its mobility. Senbans, kunais, and shurikens won't harm, but swords pose a certain danger, as do elemental ninjutsu. Thank the gods, those aren't as complicated and large, so there was little need to practice with them. It works on my own clothes, already tested. Well, for more times before the dress rehearsal, I muttered to myself and, dispersing the clone in just his underwear, created a new one. Let's move on. 
Ma, I waved to Sai, entering the training ground and attracting Sai's attention. More precisely, several Saiyas, as she was fighting against four clones at once. Given the significantly increased speed over the past five months, it wasn't easy to keep up. But training with the Jonans gradually prepared me for this, so I also improved my Taijutsu lately, becoming even faster. According to Setsura Abakan, I was approaching the level of an average Chunin. Well, do I really need to reach Kakashi's and Itachi's levels with their promotions? Anyway, do I need it? Yes, Ryukun. Firstly, finish your training, because you need to rest properly until tomorrow, and secondly, I need to have time to apply some seals to you, so hurry home and freshen up. Seals? What seals? Digging through dad's scrolls and those brought from Yuzushio, I found several suitable ones, besides strengthening clothes, I answered her, I'll show you now. Aiming my palms at the nearest target about 60 steps away, I released the projectiles. With a dull thud, senbons and shurikens almost completely embedded into the wood, barely noticeable as they flew through the air. I doubt that most jonins would be able to dodge such a close range. The most interesting thing is that upon unsealing, the initial impulse is already set, and the weapon doesn't need to gain speed, it's already flying very fast, unlike those you can throw yourself, I boasted, proudly displaying my palms to the astonished mother. Impressive, Sai shook her head, dispersing her clones and wiping the sweat from her forehead with her jacket sleeve. Is there anything else? Reinforced clothing, and this, lifting my shirt, I demonstrated the seal just above the abdomen. One-time medical seal, can heal even very serious wounds, and if there's not enough chakra for everything, it will sustain the body's vital functions, so there will be a chance to get to the hospital. HM, that's useful too, in our profession even such a chance is worth a lot, Ma shook her head. Then off to the shower, and be ready in 20 minutes, while I prepare new ink. And bring me your field uniform set, I'll apply the seals. Who's the boss here? Sai muttered to herself, tiredly walking towards home. Of course, I am. I replied to her remark and, casting a final glance at the ninja practicing with mini raisin gans, I followed. Thankfully, everything I needed for the process was prepared, now it's just a matter of mixing Ma's blood with the ink and we can start. Boss, wake up. I did it. Wake up, I'm telling you. Uh-huh. What? Startled, I almost fell off the chair and began looking around, trying to figure out what had happened. I told you, I did it. Shaking me by the shoulders, me? Blinking in surprise, I shook my head and looked again at my clone. Ah, the clone. Considering the situation and the scrolls laid out in front of me, I realized that I had fallen asleep while studying the scrolls that Sai had handed over to me from Uzumaki Mito. Did it work? Realizing what the clone was talking about, I jumped to my feet. Show me. We quickly headed to the training ground. Passing through the barrier check, I immediately noticed gradually closing craters in the ground all over the surface. Look, boss, I did it. Now we have a controlled bomb. Without waiting for my response, the clone formed a mini raisin gan in half a second, only slightly denser in appearance, and pointing his finger towards the untouched training dummies, fired it. Wow! I couldn't help but be amazed, even knowing how it should look in theory. The small glowing orb, attached to invisible chakra threads, rushed forward faster than any kunai I could throw, zigzagging and looping before crashing into the dummy from the side. But I noticed that the raisin gan didn't embed into the target like a normal one would, instead, it condensed into a point and then exploded. Gasping, I stared at the aftermath of the developing technique, not only did one dummy disappear in the explosion, but the neighboring ones were also damaged by the rushing chakra streams and thrown several dozen meters away. The crater itself was about one and a half meters wide. This from a mini raisin gan, what would happen with a normal or larger one? How did you do it? I turned to the clone. It's quite simple, in the morning, I remembered the first two steps of creating the raisin gan, and instead of trying to maintain the thread on the flows, I created a weak barrier around the rotating chakra streams, preventing excessive loss and sustaining rotation, and then attached the thread to it. HM, I should have thought of that from the beginning. I smacked myself on the forehead. Of course, now it doesn't embed, but due to compressing the shell for a fraction of a second and then releasing control, the chakra explodes and, in addition, slices everything around with the released streams, dealing additional damage. The clone grinned bloodthirstily. Of course, the difficulty of control and the amount of chakra invested in the technique doubles, if not more, but having a controlled bomb more than makes up for it. Hmm, this is no longer just a raisin gan, I muttered, shaking my head. In terms of speed, the new technique is very close to wind and lightning, the fastest elements, and at the same time, it's less costly and quicker to create, being a simple manipulation of chakra. And that's not even mentioning the possibility of control. 
How many can you make at once? I asked the clone. So far, only one, he sighed, but I think with constant training, this number can be increased, just like with the mini raisin gans. By the way, I've named this technique the Bakuhatsu Raisin Gan. Explosive? A fitting name. All right, let's prepare to transfer all the accumulated information now. I nodded contentedly and, sitting on the ground, assumed a meditative posture. As you say, boss. The shadow clone also sat down in front of me and closed his eyes. After half an hour, I got up from the ground, shook off my pants, and glanced at the sky, the sun was almost setting behind the horizon, and it was getting dark outside. Raising my hand, I created a Bakuhatsu Raisin Gan on my index finger and launched it at one of the restored wooden dummies, detonating the technique practically inches away from the target. Admiring the explosion and the swirling chakra lashes, I nodded satisfactorily, the transfer of experience was successful. The main problem with shadow clones is their inability to transfer all memories in full. The longer a clone lives, the more percentage of memory is lost during transfer. Ideally, clock clones can be dispelled without any worries, with two-hour clones, some minor details are lost, and the longer the life, the more is lost during transfer. And this is not to mention the obvious disadvantage of too much information flow at once. The Uzumaki clan found a way to avoid this, meditation. Both for the original and the copies. If the original needs to focus on receiving and organizing the acquired knowledge, then the clone must focus on the lived life, remembering every detail and almost imprinting everything known in its chakra before dispersing. As practice has shown, the transfer of necessary knowledge is almost 100%. After a few stretches, I stretched and left the training ground. The technique created today undoubtedly can claim a B rank, considering its power and maneuverability, but only Irionin or someone with a similar level of control will be able to use it for the most part. Considering it took almost a year to fully master the regular Raisin Gan and about six months for its variation, not every Jonin will be able to create a Bakuhatsu version, let alone recreate the manipulation mechanism without outside help. So even the Uchiha with their Sharingan eyes are fundamentally disappointed. Ah, now to start creating elemental versions, but considering my lack of even an idea of my own elements, these experiments are postponed for a year ahead. By that time, I plan to start ninjutsu training. By then, the channels of my body will be strong enough to pass a large amount of chakra, both regular and transformed. However, I still have plenty to do before that, I've already received permission to access the clan laboratories. Granted, only the first level for now, but that's all I need for now, I can explore the effects of my own chakra on various objects there. Maybe some of my assumptions and ideas will prove to be correct, bringing considerable benefit. Uzumaki Mido sat calmly in her favorite chair near the house, basking in the rays of the newly risen sun. With the onset of old age, her bones began to feel colder even in warm weather, so sunbathing for a couple of hours a day became the Kunoichi's favorite pastime. Everyone around was well aware of such a small weakness, and on clear days, no one dared to disturb the Uzumaki princess unnecessarily in the morning hours. Therefore, it was all the more unexpected for her to hear a quiet clap and see a small panther with a scroll in its teeth appear just a couple of steps away on the ground. Summoning contracts are very rare and even dangerous due to the high requirements for their owners, but a venerable clan like the Uzumaki possessed more than one summoning scroll. Among them were panthers. And it was Uzumaki Mido who was one of the oldest summoners of these proud creatures. Not that they knew about it in Kanoha, secrecy is the first rule of a good shinobi. So it was all the more surprising for her to discover a summoned beast acting as a messenger. Cats by their nature are capricious and wayward creatures, and panthers were no exception, considering messenger duties too demeaning for themselves. And if one of them deigned to deliver a scroll with the Yuzukage seal, something extraordinary must have happened. Naturally, Mito was aware of the alliance rupture between Yuzushiogakur and Kanahagakur, but nothing more than that, simple letters with hawks could be intercepted. Mito-sama, a message for you, the panther reported, spitting out the scroll at the feet of the elderly Kunoichi and disappearing in a puff of smoke, showing its contempt for the task performed. Picking up the scroll from the ground, Uzumaki dropped a drop of chakra-filled blood onto the seal and unfolded the paper, quickly running his eyes over the text. Once, a second time, a third time. Just to make sure she was reading it correctly, it wasn't every day that you were informed that your home clan had defeated the forces of two great villages and fled with all the land they owned into the fold of space, effectively avoiding the consequences of that action. So the boy was right, Mito shook her head, remembering the note she had received from the half-breed. I should probably give him an invitation to come visit me, especially since Kushinachan is bored alone. And it's worth it to improve his fuinjutsu skills. While I have time, I should take care of the bloodline. 
A couple days later. Hokage-sama, you have a message from Danzo-sama. Umbu appeared in the middle of Kanahagakur's office, but unlike the two bodyguards hiding in the room, he wore a simple mask with a small, na, kanji without an animal image. The shinobi pulled a scroll from his pocket, bowed, handed it to the Hokage, and disappeared into the Shunshin. Putting aside the documents he was working on, Sarutobi Hiruzen unfolded the scroll and began to read it. The more he read, the more his brow furrowed and his face stiffened. Finally, he rolled the scroll up and put the message aside, took out his pipe, filled it with the aromatic tobacco from Kusa and smoked, trying to calm himself down. After a dozen minutes, the Hokage raised his hand and snapped his fingers. Elders to me at once. He commanded the pair of umbu that had appeared. Just a few minutes later, Hamura Mitokado and Koharu Yudetane flew into the office with a worried look on their faces. What's wrong, Hiruzen? The couple exclaimed almost synchronously. Umbu, get out. Obeying the order, the guards disappeared from the office. And you sit down, we have much to discuss. The Hokage took a deep drag and let out a ring of smoke. You know where Shimura's headed, don't you? He asked, glaring at his longtime companions and receiving a nod of affirmation, Sarutobi continued. Just 15 minutes ago, he sent me a report. And? Yuzushiogakure no Sato repelled the attack of Kirigakure no Sato and Kumogakure no Sato, wiping out practically 30,000 shinobi of all ranks from the 40,000 coalition of the two great villages, after which, their island simply disappeared. What? Disappeared how? But how could they wipe out so many shinobi with just their 2,000? Ignoring the shouts of the shocked elders, the Hokage took another drag on his pipe and tossed them a scroll. Reading it, the aging shinobi could only gulp for air, unable to utter a single word. But how? To raise a wave of even a couple of meters around the entire island would require an unimaginable amount of chakra, not to mention the addition of Raten chakra of immense power. Koharu finally recovered from her shock. Danzo, on the other hand, reports a seven-meter wave. Which, on top of everything else, practically turned the attackers into charred corpses under the influence of the Raten. Hamura added. Not to mention the disappearance of a huge island. What the fuck Biju, disappearance? How can a huge island disappear into thin air? Danzo is delusional. I don't think so, Hiruzen shook his head, our spies had reported Uzumaki's active movement before their revelation, I guess it was the preparation of such a trap that took a whole year. And what about the disappearance of an entire country without a trace? I don't know any more than you do. The Hokage finally exploded. We were lucky that the wave died out after a dozen kilometers, otherwise all the coastal settlements and our posts would have been destroyed. There was a tense silence in the office. If they are capable of such surprises, then one day we might get hit by something similar simply because we tried to set them up. As long as the village has Senju and bits and pieces of their clan, we don't have to fear that, Sarutobi replied irritably, and that means no plans to weaken Senju. Provoking Uzumaki would be suicide, the elder frowned, I never expected Yuzushio to have such power. Knowing Danzo, he'll put all the red-haired ones on the list of potential threats to the village and try to implement plans to destroy them, Mitokado grumbled. If they reappear, of course. For now, we can only wait and see, the Hokage nodded, and I expect you to help delay the plans to weaken Senju, if not cancel them altogether. We can't risk another betrayal just to strengthen the Hokage's position against the clans. The coming war will do that for us anyway. Perhaps we should send a relief squad for show? Just to show our concern over the disappearance of a former ally, Hamura suggested. That's a good idea, at least it would take away any anger Mito-sama and Tokusama might have at our apparent inaction in defiance of the alliance treaty, the Hokage agreed, muttering, not that the clans have been officially notified of its breakup. Hmm. It seems that even without the concentration seal, you can use shadows, I thought aloud, sitting in the corner of the training ground and mentally manipulating my shadow. But for this, it constantly requires considerable concentration and high control over chakra. After prolonged practice, I managed to master Haydn techniques to an acceptable level even without using my hands. My attempts to increase the speed of shadow movement and the maximum area also contributed. Thanks to my innate intelligence, strong will, almost continuous absorption of large amounts of information, and increased concentration skills, I had large reserves of not only Yin energy but also Yang, surpassing even adult Nara clan members in this regard. For comparison, the ratio of mixed energies among local geniuses is approximately one unit of Yin to three units of Yang, which is a clear bias towards using clan Haydn and Kekiai Genkai techniques rather than ninjutsu. In contrast, Uzumaki often have a ratio of 1 to 15 on average, again making the use of non-clan ninjutsu much more complex than for normal shinobi, who balance around 1 to 8. 
Considering my innate energy bias towards Yang and the Uzumaki heritage, the application of both Haydn and other techniques posed no problem, unlike Kushina, who had to rely solely on her skills in Fuenjutsu, Chains of Chakra, as well as Taijutsu and Kenjutsu. Due to the large amount of Yang energy in her chakra, elemental transformations became very difficult or even impossible. Perhaps, if the opportunity arises, I will need to discuss this issue with Mito. However, that can wait. My next goal in clan techniques is to learn how to use them in motion, as a stationary shinobi is very vulnerable. Although now it's clear why so much time is devoted to teaching the art of disguising oneself and one's chakra. Considering the constantly flowing chakra from the Tenketsu, doing this with large reserves is quite difficult, even with a level of control like Hyuga's. Fortunately, thanks to the ability to separate energy into components, it was possible to prevent the formation and mixing of chakra in the source, a process that usually occurs subconsciously. Of course, there were other methods like the closed circulation of chakra, but the increasing pressure on chakra channels and the tenketsu themselves made it quite unpleasant. Moreover, you can't maintain such a disguise for long. That's why Uzumaki are not suited for espionage, they have too many noticeable characteristics. It would be possible to use absorbing seals like the Infuin, but stretching them over the entire body and simultaneously making it possible to use techniques has not been achieved by anyone yet, despite numerous attempts among Fuinjutsu masters. Even I, with my engineering background and superficial knowledge of computer programs, can't imagine how to do it. However, I have more pressing problems that I can't pass on to the shoulders of clones, apart from developing new Fuinjutsu and training in Haydn techniques. And the most significant of them is sensory perception. It would seem, what's the problem here, walk around, and your sixth sense will determine who is around you and how much chakra the detecting individuals have, as well as its type. But who has seen a Hyuga with the Byakugan constantly activated? I haven't. And why is that? Because the amount of information received by the brain is more than it can process in a sufficiently long period of time. That's why even those with Kekiai Genkai like the Byakugan activate their Dujitsu for a relatively short time, depending on their adaptability to use. And this is at a distance of no more than 2 to 3 kilometers for average clan members. My radius is approaching 2 and a half already. Considering the fact that I am in a large, albeit rural, city where crowds of shinobi live, I have tens of thousands of targets on my radar. And how can one process incoming information in such a case without falling into a stupor from its influx? I can't endure more than half an hour of using my sensory abilities, my head starts to ache terribly. Naturally, there can be no talk of training or working in such a condition. One fainting spell during training with a raisin gan exploding in my face was more than enough. Unfortunately, I haven't learned to limit my sensitivity yet, unlike dividing the nearby and faraway targets. So I have to suppress sensory perception for a somewhat normal existence. But an hour a day for training this ability is clearly not enough, and there is no free time at all, especially now that Saya has returned to the ranks of active Kunoichi. It's good that no one sent her to the front due to her long absence from practice, sending her to patrol the internal territory of the fire country, clearing out discovered bandits and enemy saboteurs along with a team of Chunin. If we judge by dad's notes, it wasn't until he was around 13 that he learned to limit his sensory radius, and I'm far from that yet. And even in the practice of Irionin, I haven't been able to apply my abilities yet, I haven't even approached healing with the chakra cloak, limiting myself to only physical injuries. In the next few years, until I receive the next degree, there's no need to even think about it. But what's most unpleasant is that the more I improve my control, the more sensitive I become, and with it, the distance at which I can detect someone else's chakra increases. Pa gradually increased control smoothly and evenly over many years. I, thanks to clones, intensive training with Raisingan, and chakra manipulation, made big leaps in this direction, not having time to get used to the enhanced abilities. Which is why I suffer. Moreover, I think I'll have a greater range than Ryota simply because of training as an Irionin. So, a distance of 7 kilometers is not a limit for me. However, if we recall the censors during the Fourth Great Ninja War, they covered hundreds of kilometers, albeit with the help of various devices, so there is something to strive for. So, before entering the academy, I need to improve my sensory abilities. I think a year and some change will be enough for me to get used to it at least a little. In the worst case, too. Again, the shadow clone technique helps with this. By the way, an interesting feature, clones have much less sensitivity than the original. 300 meters and change compared to 2.5 kilometers. And it's not clear why there's such a big difference. The only thing that comes to mind is the need for a full-fledged source for mixing yin and yang, instead of some kind of resemblance to it that each doppelganger has. 
However, even such a small radius helps my clone, constantly surveying Kanoha, not to intrude into places where it could be dispersed. Of course, adding another constantly active shadow clone to the existing six is quite stressful, but knowledge of the terrain, as well as the location of various institutions, shops, stalls, administrative buildings, and the like, will be very useful to me in the future. The same goes for Momo, who will have to work in one of the shelters after the end of the Second Great Ninja War. How many key characters came out of there in general? Immediately, Jiraiya, Orochimaru, Minato, Kabuto, and Anko come to mind. However, I'm not sure about the last one, only Oric knows for sure, but since she hasn't even been born yet, everything can still change. The next serious problem that requires a lot of time is increasing the speed of chakra circulation through the channels and saturating the body and skin with chakra. Uzumaki traditionally rely on muscles when they seek to increase the speed of their movements rather than on acceleration with chakra. Besides the obvious obstacle in the form of increased chakra density, which makes faster circulation through the channels more difficult, excellent control is also required for this action. Thus, only a few Uzumaki who have achieved considerable success in controlling their vast chakra reserves can accelerate more than threefold. On the other hand, this weakness is more than compensated by the excellent result of strengthening the body, where an ordinary shinobi would receive quite a deep wound even after saturating the area of impact with chakra, Uzumaki would get away with just a small scratch on the skin, thanks to the feature of their Kekiai Genkai. The most striking example of such invulnerability can be Hashigaki Kasame, thanks to the sea of chakra, his body doesn't even need additional reinforcement, hence such durability. It can be said that with a healing sword, he came closest to Uzumaki in terms of survivability. Of course, by the age of 25 or 30, I'll become like that too, but I'd like it to be earlier, given the approaching wars. I can endure much more damage now than even an average chunin, but these processes need to be brought to the level of bodily reflexes, then the survival rate will significantly increase as strength grows. At least you can be sure that by the age of 12, even experienced Jonin and Umbu will have to work hard before burying me. If it works out at all. In simpler terms, well-established foundations at an early age guarantee that I will achieve the rank of Jonin earlier than those who are currently slacking off and training half-heartedly, like Shikaku. That's why the Irionin direction is my main one, those who can heal themselves during a fight are much harder to kill than all other opponents. Tsunade proved it. Moreover, in Taijutsu, I'll be practically invincible, Clan Haiden techniques will provide the opportunity to stop the enemy for at least a couple of seconds, and then there's Chakra no Mezu, paralyzing the nervous system with a couple of touches, which I'm already quite good at, an old-fashioned kick in the groin, or applying a suppressing seal, allowing me to make the opponent not much more dangerous than ordinary bandits right away. Of course, this is if we don't consider monsters like Guy and Lee, who can manage without chakra in Taijutsu for some time. I doubt there are more than a few of such maniacs in all elemental countries. Except for the entire Uzumaki clan with their monstrous training. Kushi-chan, I'm here, I loudly announced to the surroundings as soon as I found myself inside the barrier that surrounded the Uzumaki women's dwelling. Ryu and I, I. You're here. With that cry, a red streak flew out from behind nearby bushes and jumped right into me. Uff. Stepping back a pace, I caught the red-haired little one in my arms and spun her around in the air, eliciting happy squeals and giggles. So, did Mitobie-chan give you any trouble? I asked her, finally setting her down on the ground. Oh ho ho, don't worry, Ryu Kuen, Kushina is a well-behaved girl and behaves perfectly, especially when she knows you're coming to visit, the ancient Uzumaki informed me, coming out of the house and smiling warmly. Since Ma started going missing on missions, home had become quite dull and lonely, not to mention the decline in the quality of food, so another invitation to visit, this time from Mito Uzumaki, came in very handy. At first, one, then another along with an offer to study Fuenjutsu, and my visits to distant relatives became a regular occurrence. In other words, when I had free time or wanted to study seals, I went to the Senju district to see Mito and Kushina. The guards at the gates had long since memorized me and let me pass without any questions. Of course, this didn't mean I practically moved in with them, but I showed up two or four times a week for sure. However, the significantly increased workload at the hospital over the past six months consumed a lot of time, which forced me to even reduce the number of clones to four, excluding the researcher and the one studying Fuenjutsu, and redistributing the rest to several different tasks instead of just one. Given the almost complete depletion of chakra by the end of the shift, sending a shadow clone made no sense, it dispersed literally after a few hours of work. And it's not just that the number of patients increased only twofold due to the reduced number of high-level irionin, 
but also due to the war, severely wounded soldiers started arriving, albeit somewhat treated on the front lines, who needed further recovery under the supervision of medics, as well as the teams that were engaged in capturing enemy shinobi saboteurs sneaking past the border posts. Even Ma ended up on a hospital bed a couple of times with moderate injuries, despite my medical seal, which I had to apply practically anew after every other outing. No, seriously, why does she keep rushing ahead? For a full-fledged jonin, her taijutsu level barely reaches the average level, and every time she risks against more experienced opponents, it's just suicidal. And she continues to do so even after I've had a serious talk with her about it. And the fact that my heart stops and it becomes impossible to breathe every time I see her injured is just too much. The only plus in the current situation is the increase in my irionine experience, when there aren't enough hands, even novice medics are allowed to perform complex surgeries. And considering my huge reserves for this profession and the ability to create shadow clones, sometimes I work in four wards simultaneously. So, if this emergency continues a little longer, the next degree won't be far off. At least with medical ninjutsu, I've already learned to work a little, including patching up small damage to chakra channels and somehow restoring the burnt nerve endings in various taijutsu damaged limbs, which is also not bad. Of course, I shouldn't have abandoned fuenjutsu, but the alternative that came in the form of Mito Bie-chan turned out to be much more effective. Under her guidance, I realized the difference between a talented self-taught person with textbooks and a student of a master. Both can achieve mastery, but the former only through trial and error, while the latter by obeying the guiding hand of the teacher. It's clear which case will yield faster results. By comparison, on my own, I reached the level of a solid apprentice, capable of using fairly complex and multifunctional seals, modifying existing ones, and creating relatively simple ones from scratch. On the other hand, an ordinary Uzumaki can create complex seals by the age of 9, which I can only modify for now. The difference in level is obvious. Again, where I need to draw a seal and test it in action to find any errors, then redraw it, repeating the process many times to achieve a positive result, with Mito, all I have to do is show her the scroll, and a couple of moments later, she'll simply point out the mistake and explain it. All I have to do is correct it, and the seal is ready. So I'm a frequent guest at B.A. Chan's house. An additional perk is interacting with Kushina, who has hardly any friends and can't go out to the village unaccompanied for obvious reasons. Of course, the fact that she's not a native resident plays into this, and in a hidden village, that's not encouraged. And the rarity of red hair plays a role too. It doesn't bother me much, mainly because of my hectic schedule and intensive training, but an ordinary kid, especially a girl, could suffer quite a bit from it. Hence the initial shyness when meeting me and Ma from a fairly cheerful, active, and lively little girl. That's why the roles of a kind older brother and another grandson stuck to me almost instantly. And I didn't really object much, since in the company of two Uzumakis, I began to feel at home, unlike at home in the Nara district, which became dull and empty without Saya. Besides, apart from Ma and Setsuro Obachan, I didn't bond with my clanmates enough to consider them one big happy family. Comparing the attitudes of the grandfathers on both sides, Isher looks much colder and more distant, although it would be quite difficult for a child to notice this. Another factor may be the strained relationship between Sai and Isher. The reason for that is easy to guess. And not least, withholding information from Yuzushio even considering the clan relationship through me. In other words, the head of the Nara clan doesn't consider Pa and his family worthy of his support, otherwise, he would have written a small letter of warning. So why should I feel something else towards slackers? Ha, huh, I've been given more gifts by Yuzushio in one go than here in my whole life, just out of simple joy to meet another Uzumaki. And this is without them knowing about my contribution to the clan's defense. Naturally, after that, it becomes obvious who should be considered the real family and helped in any way possible. It's nice to hear that, B.A. Chan, I smiled in response, emerging from a small excursion into memories and ruffled Kushina's hair. What do you want to do today? To the park. I want to go to the park, the little one responded enthusiastically, immediately grabbing my hand and pulling me away from the house. Hmm, the park in the Senju district is really cool, and the adjoining playground, combined with a training ground, would make even adults jealous. Thank Kami, I'm not part of them yet and can play with Kushina without worrying about sideways glances and smirks from others. Not that it ever bothered me even in my past life, let alone now. Alright, alright, let's go now, just let me grab your set of kanai and shuriken, I replied. I nodded with a smile, observing Mito watching us, and entered the house. A couple of minutes later, a newly created clone hoisted a very happy Kushina onto his shoulders and dashed towards the park, accompanied by the cheerful squeals of the little one. 
So, what did you want to talk about? A voice sounded near my ear, almost making me jump in surprise. Ba Chan. Don't sneak up on me like that from behind. Turning around, I came face to face with the extremely pleased face of my relative. Damn, Centennial Shinobi and their pranks. And she enjoys scaring me like that. Come on, no need to react so sharply, Mito chuckled, patting me on the cheek. With a huge effort of will, I refrained from my natural reaction to sulk at the teasing, but a quiet chuckle showed the futility of my efforts. Oh well. Unrolling a scroll from my wrist to my elbow, I tossed it to Uzumaki. What's this? The result of my efforts over the last three months, I replied. This is? Mito said in surprise, unfolding the scroll and examining the seal. A combination of Infuin and Ayaku Fuin, I nodded. But why? This seal will allow you to live longer than just a few miserable months after the fox's extraction. Where did you get this? Mito's suddenly heavier gaze made me squirm a bit, but I met it head on. From Grandpa, and I've read about Biju before, I answered, considering Kushina's presence here, it's not hard to guess the reason, especially with almost identical chakra. And the seal? Should provide some stability to your Kirakukiai after resealing and ideally allow our Kekiai Genkai to give you at least a few more years of life without the adverse effects of the Biju's toxic chakra. Hmm, it seems like you've made the seal without any obvious mistakes, Mito tapped her finger on her lips thoughtfully, how confident are you in the outcome? I'm a hundred percent confident in the positive result, but as for how much additional time can be gained in recovery, I have no idea, I honestly replied, no one has studied the properties of our Kekiai Genkai for understandable reasons, and it's especially difficult to say anything concrete in the case of Jinchuriki. Considering that I'm the first Jinchuriki of the Ninetales, especially among the clan, it's not surprising, Mito shook her head. After thinking about it for a while, I asked a quite logical question, why isn't the Slug Princess doing anything? Together, they could come up with something better than my crude contraption. Have you been examined by Tsunade or discussed this with her? Why? Uzumakis hardly ever get sick, and even wounds on us heal quickly, so I've never been in the hospital, the elderly Kunoichi shrugged, besides, no Uzumaki would want to become a test subject, and it's not worth revealing the potential of our Kekiai Genkai to outsiders, even allies. My granddaughter is Sarutobi's student. So Tsunade hasn't tried to extend your life after extracting the nine tails, considering your age suitable for death from old age, I nodded. Exactly. Given the exacerbated relations between Kanoha and Yuzushiogakure over the past four years, it just wasn't a priority, the relative said sadly, and I've come to terms with it. During our conversation, which started near the window where I watched the departing clone with Kushina, we moved to the living room and settled comfortably in soft armchairs, next to which were round tables with vases of cookies, specifically for such occasions. After crunching on some cookies, I continued the conversation. And it's a shame. Over time, I conducted a series of experiments with our chakra on various living creatures as well as on my own flesh, cutting pieces of meat from myself was very painful and scary, but one does what one must for science, and discovered some peculiarities. Mito raised an eyebrow questioningly, awaiting further explanation. I won't describe the effort it took to achieve artificial aging without tissue necrosis and without the influence of chakra residues, but the result was excellent, when my chakra acted on aging tissue, the cells started dividing again, getting rid of dead ones and replenishing the missing ones, which led to almost complete restoration to the state it was in at the time of extraction. It's quite obvious that the Uzumaki Kekiai Genkai affects the body, regenerating it to a certain extent even in the presence of signs of aging. Such an effect was observed only in this case, unlike with other living beings used as test subjects. And how does this help me? My Kekiai Genkai should work similarly, but because of the Ninetales toxic chakra, it doesn't, Mito asked. Most likely, only because of the properties of my chakra am I still alive, while an ordinary shinobi would have died long ago. All of that is true, but I have one theory, I shook my head, you age faster than a typical Uzumaki not because the seeping biju chakra damages the body, but because the Kekiai Genkai doesn't heal it fast enough. What do you mean, the Kunoichi leaned forward eagerly, anticipating my answer. The chakra emanating from the biju seal, mixing with yours, most likely just neutralizes almost all of its positive properties, causing aging to occur just like in normal people. Thus, after extracting the nine tails, there's an opportunity to reverse this process. The body can't do it on its own due to the almost guaranteed damage to the Kirakukiai, immense stress, and overall exhaustion after the ritual. That's where my seal comes in, with the additional infusion of chakra similar in properties to yours into the damaged channels, 
Not only will the residual toxicity be removed and regeneration start, but there will also be a chance to restore all the positive properties of the Kekiai Genkai before the critical point is reached, after which the body simply starts to break down. I hardly understand anything about medicine, but your theory looks logical, Mito tiredly rubbed her nose and leaned back in her chair. I'm willing to try, especially since there's no risk, worst case scenario, I'll die within a month after resealing. And in the best case scenario, you'll have half a lifetime ahead of you, and I'll have to call you Mito-chan, I smirked slyly. Well, it's nice to dream, she chuckled. Besides, Kushina will need all the support she can get, I said seriously, Princess Uzumaki, the honorary elder of the Senju clan, and the wife of the first Hokage, no one would dare touch her, but the same can't be said for Kushina Uzumaki, just a Jinchuriki without the support of family and parents. Of course, there's me too, but I doubt the Hokage and the elders would be pleased if someone were to influence the village weapon without their consent. So, Bachan, your only way out is to stay alive for as long as possible. And then who knows how things will turn out? Not to mention that I've already been attempted to be kidnapped once, and I really don't want to give any extra reasons for a second attempt. I understand, Ryukuen, Mito sighed heavily, suddenly looking even older than she actually was, Tokachan could take care of Kushina, but even she isn't all-powerful in Konoha, despite all the influence of the Senju. The war has taken its toll even on the strongest clans. That's why we should continue to try to improve the seal, rather than settle for what we've achieved, I concluded. When is the transfer planned? In two weeks, no later, Hiruzen and his gang are too worried about my sluggishness, Uzumaki scoffed, and Danzo's rats are lurking around too often. Then, while there's still time, I'll try to come up with something else, I nodded to her. After all, I haven't experimented with my own blood yet. Who knows what results can be achieved with a bit of imagination, diligence, knowledge, and ideas. Perhaps saturating the blood with medical chakra is the desired way to reproduce Karen's technique. I'll need to dig into the library, both at the hospital and the clans, and read about the general properties of blood. Maybe the method of creating blood restoring pills will come in handy if the idea succeeds. Bachan, we're back, a lively voice of Kushina from outside the house interrupted the silence, followed by the slamming of the door. Quickly jumping to the ceiling, I stuck with chakra and, running a little along it, hung over the door, contorting my face as the giggling Mito began to laugh into her palm. Hurried steps were heard from the corridor, and Kushina burst into the living room, followed by my clone, who walked completely silently. Kavarimi, I whispered quietly, forming a seal and swapping places with the clone. A small puff of smoke under the ceiling quickly dissipated, and I caught training weapons pouches and, acting as if nothing had happened, followed the little one, who ran to her grandmother, sorting through the memories she received. Did you have a good walk? Mito asked. Yes, Ryo and I, I is so fast and strong. And I'm smart and handsome too, he added, smiling broadly. I'll be like that too when I grow up, databane, the little girl exclaimed, throwing her fist into the air. Okami, oh, here she goes again with her catchphrase. You're already beautiful, Kushinachan, Mito reassured her. And to become as smart as me, you need to read a lot and play shogi, I chimed in, how about a little game? Okay, now I'll win for sure, databane. Sighing, I unfolded the shogi board in pieces, casting a quick glance at the elder Uzumaki. A few months ago, we had a substantive conversation about Kushina's use of ninjutsu, and since then, the little one has devoted a lot of time to various mental activities, including reading and shogi. Thank you. I tossed the money onto the counter, then stepped out onto the street, feeling satisfied, and leisurely made my way towards the clan district. After another night shift at the hospital, which turned out to be surprisingly busy this time, I decided to take a walk early in the morning along the deserted streets. To my surprise, I stumbled upon a remarkably familiar little eatery. It served ramen. And its name was Ichiraku Ramen. Naturally, it would be sacrilege not to stop by. To my surprise, behind the counter was not only a young-looking Tucci but also a young woman who bore a striking resemblance to his unborn daughter. Another surprise based on my existing knowledge. However, I didn't dwell on it too much and treated myself to a hearty breakfast of five servings of ramen with various toppings and a portion of miso soup with crackers. It was then that I understood Naruto's obsession with this food, compared to our ration packets, the taste was simply divine. Of course, you wouldn't eat there constantly, but if you remembered the conditions of Naruto's childhood, there wouldn't be any other choice. Plus, it was cheap compared to other eateries in the village center where I had to eat. Definitely worth visiting more often and showing Choji the place, he's always ready to try out a new establishment. 
Yawning widely, I rubbed my sticky eyes and glanced at the sign on the building to my right, Imashiba Hot Springs. Well, why not? I'll relax in the hot water, warm up nicely, and then off to bed, to sleep until the next morning. Weekends should be arranged more often, but when there's a war looming and you clearly understand that the safety of your own skin depends on your own abilities, you just forget about it. Considering the relative safety of my past life in this regard, this fact is quite alarming and serves as a good incentive. But lately, I've been thinking more and more about my true age. The reason is quite simple, if for the first three or four years I felt like an old man in a child's body and often behaved accordingly, though not very differently from lazy and brilliant peers from the clan, then the further I went, the more my psyche adapted to the body I had. And, upon careful consideration, this started after the memories of my past life began to fade. The experience and knowledge didn't disappear anywhere, but there arose a very strong desire to break out of the established, behavior pattern that I set for myself at the very beginning. The episode with the future Sanin speaks for itself. Although, I haven't had this much fun in a long time. I don't think I'll be able to resist the urge to prank someone in the future, especially with hormones starting to wake up. Shaking my head, I got rid of the overly profound thoughts for early morning and realized that I had been staring blankly at a small sign that read, Shinobi only, for several minutes, located just below the name of the springs, as well as a note, Monday, Thursday, Saturday, combined days. And today is Thursday. But who cares what I didn't see there? I have nothing to be ashamed of, monstrous physical exertion and exhausting battles with opponents superior in all parameters did their job, practically getting rid of the fat layers that every child has, leaving mostly muscles. In my opinion, there were even too many muscles for a shinobi who doesn't prefer taijutsu, but a short conversation with Setsura reassured me, when the period of accelerated growth begins, excess muscle mass will only be beneficial. Entering the hot springs, I threw some money to the sleepy guy and, grabbing the ready-made bathing set consisting of a small wooden tub, a towel, a sheet, and washing accessories, I went further into the dressing room. I had been to such places only once before in my past life, although not in Japan, but I was familiar with the procedure, so after all my clothes were in the locker, I didn't rush straight to the steaming spring, but leisurely headed to the row of washing places, where I sat down on a stool and, after a couple of rinses, began to lather up. There are only about a dozen such establishments throughout Konoha, and only two of them are exclusively for shinobi. Quite a few, considering the total population, but for one place, a fairly decent number of underground springs come out. The question arises immediately, did the Senju brothers choose such a place to found the village? Or did they manage to artificially create such places? Considering the mastery of Suetun by the younger brother and Dotan by the elder, this thought may not be so far from the truth. After all, ninja value comfort and various amenities of civilization much more, not least because of the danger and nervousness of their profession, not to mention the percentage of those who live to old age. Few know, but various entertainment and recreational establishments in Kanoha belong not to wealthy merchants, as ordinary residents think, but to clans, except for their usual activities. The Nara clan, in addition to producing medicines and breeding deer, also has a decent income from various dining establishments. The Akimichi clan, in addition to their restaurants and pills, also engage in alcohol trading. This hot spring, like several others of the best ones, belongs to the Senju clan. And so on. Of course, the village is large and trade thrives in it, so even clans cannot subjugate everything, but about 35% of Kanahagakur no Sato's business belongs to clans, another 20%, to the village budget, about 10%, to retired shinobi or hereditary families, and all the rest is left to the simple people. You can find anything in the remote corners of the clan library. Including last year's financial summaries intended for the village council. The Hokage may be the sole ruler of the military village, but he cannot cover all directions at once, otherwise there would have been no council at all. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.